Bearcat Bounce Podcast, back at it again. As always, I am Brent Young. It's another beautiful day out in Bearcat land, wherever you are, whether it's in Indianapolis, where I currently am, in, in the beautiful state of Ohio, where none other than my, my two sidekicks here, Mr. Aaron Smith and Chad Brendel, are, all, are, are most of the time located or out on the far west coast. Who knows? We'll, we'll talk about that here in a little bit. But for right now, I got to say it. Aaron, Chad, gentlemen, how are we? Doing pretty good. We got, we got a great guest today. It's a it's a wonderful day in Cincinnati. We finally have a day that, like, if we got somebody on from Southern California, we can be proud of right. the day that we had here in Cincinnati. That first day where, like, the you almost felt like, ooh, that sun feels a little warm today. A little, <laughs> a little heat on the body. And so uh, I'm good. I'm very good. I mean, yeah, we can low-key say, like, I, you know, I'm in – I'm in Southern Cal too, low key. No. <laughs> Aaron, how are we? Feeling better than I have been the last couple of days. So hoping uh, I don't have to mute too many times just to sniffle and, and cough. So hopefully we're on the uh, the other side of this. There we go. As long spring, as we're on the other side. Spring fever. It's spring fever. Sinuses every every year, man. It's terrible. Well, spe- oh. speaking of spring fever, you might get yourself a. Little little problem with your car with the change of weather here and there, little fluctuation. That's when you go to Danco Transmission. Got to get a quick shout out to Danco Transmission. There wasn't a basketball game in the past week, so are we multiplying the most recent no. score of the baseball <laughs> game? That promotion, unfortunately, <laughs> has come to an end. Still ten dollars off of your oil change if you do head to Danco. Mention Bearcat Journal. Mention BCJ. Mention mention anything. Mention the BBP. Get yourself ten dollars off your next oil change over there at Danco Transmission. But that's enough talk so far. I'm gonna I'm gonna hand it off to Chad to introduce a legendary guest that we have here on the BBP today. Chad, take it away. We are joined by Super Bowl champion. How good does that feel? How good does that yeah. feel? It feels great. It feels great to be a Super Bowl champ for sure. We're joined by none other than former Bearcat. Defensive line standout, one of the first standouts of the Luke Fickle era, and a guy that's having great success in the NFL. Uh, a great dude, and a guy I'm happy to uh, to get on and and let Bearcat Nation get to know a little bit more. Marquise Copeland of the Los Angeles Rams joins the show. Welcome in, brother. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate you guys for having me on the show. Thank you. Well, gentlemen, have at it. I, I will. I will start it off. Um, yeah, you you pulled off maybe the one of the most rare things in Bearcat history, the Uh-oh. double dip in Bearcats, as you were a Bedford Bearcat before yeah. becoming a Cincinnati Bearcat, and I honestly don't know that that's ever been done before. So, <laughs> what did it feel like to go from Bearcat to Bearcat in that type of a transition? <laughs> Uh, so when I was coming out of um, uh, high school, my my mom, my whole family would make uh, jokes about it. Like I just wanted to stay at Bearcat and, and everything. <laughs> but re- really, it really just felt like home. It, the name helped everything. It made it feel super normal. So that was, it was just a great feeling. That, well, going back to your high school, let's stay in high school real quick. I know that you were you were playing linebacker, if I'm if I'm right. But I know that you were also. Uh, a, a star on another sport. I, I think you might have have pulled pulled out quickly of that sport, but recently it it came and cropped back up. We talked about it a little bit off air, but I mean your wrestling prowess. You might need to bring that out into the forefront again here in the near future. But I, you know, tell tell us a little bit about high school and just kind of the transition from linebacker to defensive line, and then of course you know what into what else went into your decision, and then maybe the future wrestling match between you and uh, Bearcat commit Ethan Green signee Ethan Green. <laughs> Yeah, so and in high school, uh, I played linebacker, uh, defense, and uh, really just being athletic and uh, just playing different uh, parts of the field, like just just using my athletic abilities. So my coach would just put us everywhere, really. Uh, so I played a little tight end, a little D end, a little linebacker. Uh, I got I got in the backfield, play a little running back. Actually, they had a play for me in college. Put me at running back, but we ne- we just never got to it. Oh, but uh, <laughs> but uh, no, so uh, yeah, no. Uh, so really, in high school, it was just more just being athletic, having fun with your friends, and just running around, and making plays, and then uh, then 
Cincinnati took notice of me, and then it was all up from there. We'll talk about wrestling, though. I, Coach Fickle, Chad, you want to go ahead and, and, and bring up that story real quick? So I'll, I'll, I'll lay down the, the the way that this all went down. Uh, Cincinnati signee Ethan Green is uh, he 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 was a state qualifier as a junior. He's one of the best heavyweights in the state. Uh, okay. He so Coach Fickle told him when he committed, like Ethan likes to talk. So Ethan is basically like told Coach Fick, "I'm coming for you." Like mm -hmm. I know you were yeah. a state champ, and and Fick was like, "Look." I'm a state champ. You don't get you don't even get to talk to wrestling about wrestling to me until you're a state champ. If you win a state championship, you might get a chance to like work the ladder towards yeah. the boss. Uh so when he won state, I texted Thick and I was like, he won state. Like he, you know, he gets to he gets to earn his shot. And he said, Yeah, I think we're gonna have Cope for him. I, I think Cope is gonna be the one. If Ethan wants to work his way to a to the to the top of the throne, he's gonna have to go through Coke to get it. Uh, so then I started joking around on Twitter about it. Uh, you so you were a state qualifier as a junior. You didn't wrestle as a senior, right? To focus on football, right? How good were you in on the mat? I think I was personally. I think I was one of the best. You know, I think I was the best. <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, my senior year, I didn't wrestle. Uh, I wanted to focus more on football. But um, I'm still waiting for my match with Coach Fick. So, ah. <laughs> so either, either has a way after me. He can, after I get my match, we're, we're going to really see who the champ is and then who, then who he has to go through first. <laughs> so if you beat Ethan, then you get Fick. Yeah, then I get Fick. And then Fick has to come. Then, then we got to see <laughs> Yeah. He loves the wrestling background, though, doesn't he? Was that something you guys clicked on when when he got there? Uh, yeah, no, me me and Coach Fig joked about it all the time. Um, I think, but but personally, I think it helped me a lot. Uh, just being able to to like put some of the things from football and wrestling just just mix them together, and uh, it, it helped me in a lot of different aspects. It helped me like just get low and with my hands and stuff. So I think wrestling and football they 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 correlate uh, well. And I think Coach Vic knows that too as well. You were one of the few guys that can talk about the experience that was attention training. You were there. You lived it. Yeah. See, look at that face. As soon as you mention it, everybody gives that same look. Take yeah. us through. Like, that was your introduction to Brady. That was really your introduction to Fick. Take us through that week out in the out in the snow and the ice and, and the, the beginning of the Luke Fickle era. Yeah, no. So, so that 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 week was it was it was rough. It was needed, but it was rough for sure. But I remember the first day work getting there. It was I don't know. I think it was like six o'clock. So and we were already outside, dark, you know. And I and we cold. we all think I, we all Real think cold. we're going. It was cold, super cold, freezing cold outside. And we all we all just think we're going to go on like a morning jog, run around the campus, and, <laughs> you know. <laughs> go back inside. With me. I know that's what I was thinking. I was like, okay, this is gonna be an easy jog. Like, boom. Then we started. Uh, we went on the field. We started warming up, and I'm, I'm like, okay, cool. We, we'll, we'll get there soon. We'll get there soon. And then we just started doing more and more and more on the field, and like, it was just like, <clears throat> like I don't, I don't know. I don't even. Like, <laughs> it was just a long. It was a long. It was a long week, but it was needed. Like I don't think we wore any Bearcat stuff that week. Uh, yeah. uh, any anything like that, uh, just to like get our identity. That was the start of us getting our identity back, you know. Because the years before we we had good, we had really good players, you know. And uh, we just I don't feel like we had that identity. And then it's when since Fig's been there, it's, you know, we've we've had more of our our Bearcat football identity and, and who we are, you know, as a program. So I feel like that was the the start of it. And and that yeah, that's. It had to be hard changes to, to get there for sure. So yeah, was was there ever a thought about leaving when that all went down, or were were you all in? Like how 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 did you guys all handle that internally? Uh, it was it was more of a confusing time just because uh, you know our head coach left, new head coach coming in. We didn't really nobody knew what was really going on. So 
I can't say I was all in at first, but I bought in for sure, like quick. Just knowing who he was and how he changed, like as soon as he got there, he just like it, like everything like literally changed. It was like, yeah. I feel like a college athlete, you know, a real like this is like what it's supposed to feel like. This is how we're supposed to be treated and how this is supposed to be going. So, I definitely bought in quick, and I think everybody else did too. And then, I mean, we definitely bought in quick because we had the same team from being four and eight to the next year. You know, we were. Mostly the same team. Yeah, right? yeah, same team. So I think everybody bought in quick. So we're going to touch more on, on, on Fick a lot. But now that we're on this current subject, tell us more a little bit about Brady Collins and, and, and just your thought on Brady and, and what he's done for your career as a Bearcat and past that. Because we have Brady on this pod every other week during the offseason. So Br- uh-huh. Brady's a – Brady's a piece he's of a, this pod. He's an honorary co-host of this podcast. Honorary co-host. So, so he's <laughs> he, he's listening right now. So if, if if you want to just you know fill us in on, on Brady Collins, we know the man. Co- but, but how about co- the coach and everything he's done for you? Coach Brady, it was with, with Coach Brady. It was, it was different. Coach Brady was was with us. Like Coach Fick is there. You know he was he was the head the, the head guy. But Coach Brady was there with us every day. You know we really changed with him. Like he's seen our like. Day to day, like checked off this. We go, we we. He's in there when we're eating. He's checking our weights. He's we are working out with him. We're struggling. We're we're dying in the weight room with him. So that he was, he was like our, like our, our older, our older brother, our glue basically keep us together. You know, like he he was definitely hard on us. Now, like like an older brother, like he was definitely hard on us. You know, never let us like slack off. But he was he was there. He was there for me for and I know for a lot more guys um the whole time since since he got there really. And then of course you can expand on the other coaching staff. Luke obviously is the name that's that's really gonna stick there and, and, and be one that people he always can tell talk you all about. about D line coaches. He had all the D line coaches. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we I've had all the D line coaches, every single one of them. Uh no, really uh um no, so those two guys, though, those, those were the guys who who really like. I feel like really stuck there. Really, were going to stick there together. I felt really like, like my, you know, I see these guys every day. They're they've been there. You know, what I'm saying since they both got there, they they haven't. They're going to stay. I feel like, and they're just two great guys. So those those two made the biggest impact on me. And then my position coaches, it was that was more of a. Um, just getting to know that that I feel like that helped me in a way too having multiple different uh position coaches because I got to learn a lot of different techniques. I gotta learn how to to adjust to different coaching and and everybody doesn't really work the same. They but you can take from each coach every part of their game and then try to put it in try to put it in your game. They they just want to get you better. So I think I think those years, just putting all those coaches together, I, I could like they all helped me in in a certain way. I'm curious. Um, not a, a lot of guys. Obviously, when you go to college, you you meet all your the new friends on the team. But you and Cortez really seem to to be like instant. Like you guys are brothers. Like take me through the beginning of that relationship and just being in college with him for four years i mean you guys were it seemed like inseparable yeah no really it was really just it was really the the whole d-line unit i feel like i was that me cortez kamani kevin and and even the younger guys uh we were all really close uh me and cortez we played that interior we had to communicate a lot more though you know what i'm saying just amongst each other um now I feel like we we did hang out. We like we like the same stuff. So so it would just it just was a natural bond between the, just the whole unit. Period. You, you know. So uh, it was we were brothers. We were inseparable. All of us though. Really, I like even like some of the younger I still talk to now, and I know like like Maj is coming off. Uh, he's going. He's going to the uh, combine, doing good stuff. Uh, Elijah, Autumn, Curtis, all those younger guys, they were there when, when we were, uh, I think, my senior year, like my junior year. So just grew up with those guys, yeah. too. So everybody, we were really just a, a, a tight group. Marcus was a freshman when you were a freshman, though, right? <laughs> <laughs> 
he's been around a long time, Cope. Yeah, no, Big Brown. Yeah, he, he's he. <laughs> that's my guy. It, it, what 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 did you think? Because there was a lot of concern when you and Cortez graduated. Like, mm -hmm. oh no, like and and Kamani and and Muhan kind of moved on a little bit. Like, what what's next on the D line? We might be in trouble. Like, did you guys have confidence that like, look, the, the, we got a group of young dudes that are going to be able to handle this? Don't sweat it. No, no, yeah, yeah, we definitely, I, like, we definitely knew that. That's, I knew this who was behind me and who was how how hard they would work. Period. Like, so they were work, yeah. they were work just as hard as us. You know, doing the same thing as us. It, their time was coming right after ours, and it was no drop off ever. So, like, if we were getting in and practice, they we would switch out anything. They, you knew that we were we felt comfortable enough. And always to for them to get in the game and to take over and for it to be their their time and with their time they've done good things. Now Chad brought up some of the line that you've been with. Were you surprised that even with your line, how many of you guys did make it to the league with you know with with Ponder and and Broughton and yourself? Uh, am I surprised? No, I, I mean I knew we we all have we all were we all are talented. So I'm not surprised. Um, I actually think if we had more recognition, there would be even more got even more of us in the the NFL. This is this. I feel like we have skill sets and, and that that get overlooked because we're Cincinnati sometimes. So you know, like we weren't as big, and now we're getting there. So I feel like if we had more of a spotlight, there would be more guys here from Cincinnati in the NFL. I I have one more question on Cortez. It, did you guys ever go back and forth on who's the better second sport athlete? You with wrestling and Cortez as the infamous pitcher in Little League? <laughs> no, we we never went. We went never we never went back and forth. Uh I heard Cortez was a good pitcher, but he, we both would probably say that I was probably the better wrestler. Me and him both. Okay, fair, fair. Next I mean question. Cortez, I, the, the best part about Cortez, you know he was that giant kid, right? Like yeah, <laughs> all with all playing like he was he was the one everybody looked at like we need to see that kid's birth certificate because he should not be playing baseball yeah, with these 12 year olds pictures of him when he was here yeah, i seen <laughs> pictures of him. he was he was he was he was a grown man playing with little kids <laughs> yeah had like the projected speed like mlb speed 99 and he's throwing <laughs> just heaters at these little kids i believe it but uh so tell me you know you mentioned the buy-in a little bit but obviously year one under fick to year two did, did the buy-in have to be restored or did it have to be fortified or was it kind of just like, oh, we're going to be so much better this next year because that following year was when things really, really took off? Uh, Yeah, so, no, the first year was – it was the – the first year was a part of the process, really. It was it was part of the buying in the, the – we had to go through things as a team now. Like, we're, we're getting closer, we're bonding, you know, so – the, the the first year was needed. It was a needed first year. It was needed struggles to stick together. Like because the year before we went four and eight as well, but we were so much we were so much more disconnected. Right. Now the second year we went four and eight. We still had each other's back. We 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 you know. So I feel like that just just showed us that we could be that special group that we know we are. One of the big changes was was that Navy game. Um, obviously from yeah. Year one to year two, year yeah. two, you guys just completely demolished them. So the, the talk became the the staff would pick a game to to kind of focus on a little bit more during the off season. Was that kind of just you guys were going to say, no way, the midshipmen are running for anything on us on this Saturday afternoon? It, just, just you know that that that's just like a when you hear that that first game, my junior, year, uh, that was just. As a football player, you don't ever want to hear that. You don't want to ever like they broke a record. You know, you don't even want to just think about that. So, it was more of a just yeah. We focused on that game, but as players, we wanted to get to that game because we knew we, you you know how that is. You know, <laughs> you want you want to get your get back for sure. Yeah. Eric, um, I, well, I so going off that, talk about Camp Higher Ground because. This is obviously that it's been a a storied off season. All of us have been there before to Camp Higher Ground. We, you know, the last couple of seasons for myself. I know Chad goes every single off season. So you know, kind of you know, talk about your favorite parts 
and kind of just what your mindset was going into Camp Higher Ground every year? Uh, Camp Higher Ground was it was a it was a struggle, but it it was it was a it was a struggle my freshman year and my sophomore year more, <clears throat> just just because, like you said, I really didn't. It was a new place. It was fast. It was you know I was trying to get into it. I played as a true uh, true freshman, so it was all just going like crazy fast for me. So it was it was it was a struggle a little bit, but I was getting to it. Um, and then my junior senior year, it was more slow football slow be like becoming a team that's when fit got there so more of like a uh like we're worried about football and being together as this unit and definitely when we were there it was a my my senior year, i think we were there for 21 days i, I think we were there for super we were there for forever it felt like like <laughs> like I, I just wanted to go home and just relax but uh no it was it was needed because that year, I don't think I think we were so excited just for everybody on that team to make any type of play. We were we were together. We cheered no matter what. We were like these. I don't think that all started with Camp Higher Ground. And my favorite part of that was like just becoming brothers and, and doing all that stuff. Um, seeing each other every day. You don't see anybody besides your teammates. That's that's another. You don't. You literally don't see anybody. It's just us. It's that's the closest group you can get you can become is there no mention any, of the food I was, the food okay. the food is the <laughs> food, let me yeah no the food is great too for sure definitely i was more so talking about football but the food the staff <laughs> they're the all the whole uh camp higher ground everybody out there they're great people to us they 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 welcome us you know they make us feel comfortable like family so that's that's, that's yeah i was gonna say anytime we, we talk about higher ground we always bring up the food with anybody who, who chats with us just because a we've had it and it's excellent and b yeah. the, the guys talk about how like even after hours they get that that extra late night meal where you guys will go through a an absurd amount of wings or whatever the the extra food late at night happens to be and yeah guys talk about loot like they go to higher ground to lose weight but end up gaining weight you, because you can gain weight. You can definitely gain <laughs> weight higher ground. Yeah, no, for sure. You'll definitely get a, get a cool five pounds at higher ground. Take me through a, a, having a freshman quarterback that that senior year and watching the emergence of Dez go from a guy that you know was going to be used situationally with Hayden initially to when they put him on the field, he was one of those dudes, right? Like he got on the field and he said, "I'm never coming off," and he yeah. never came off. Dez and he never came off. No, Dez, Dez was he was on a he was on a scout team the year before, so. So I so we seen Dez, we seen Des every day, but he was you 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 knew Desmond had it since since then he just had to get the the smaller things he had to to finish like the, he had to develop a little bit more. But Des was he he like you could tell he wanted to to be that guy since his true freshman year, and uh, he just controlled the offense. Uh, I, I I always. I always thought that Des. I thought he was going to be a good quarterback for sure. And then he came out and he showed everybody else what he could do. So let's talk. There was about always the, there was always a lot of talk on Des real quick that when he came in, everybody just could sense he was a leader. You have an interesting perspective, like you mentioned, because you guys were on that scout team. Were there times where he did stuff on scout team that you were like, "Oh, that's that yeah, don't no, look like that, a scout that, team quarterback." Yeah, no, that yeah, that's not, he got us better. I thought like he worked our defense so we could get better that second year, and he 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 helped us for sure. He came in, he was a young guy. He we helped him. He helped us for sure, and it was he definitely you could definitely tell he was a leader from from the jump, and uh, that's still one of my closest friends till this day. I still talk to Des. That's what I wanted to kind of touch on was just that that first game at the Rose Bowl, your senior year. You guys going in there, and I don't know if you if you're someone that listens to the to the national people and what they're saying and all that stuff, but no one was giving the Bearcats a chance. They said they didn't have the athletes, this, that, and the other. You guys go in and put on a, a, a dominant show and just beat UCLA. Beat them. How did that feel? What what went into that game? Anything yeah. Fix said to kind of get you guys fired up? Yeah. That that game was a that game was 
I, that was our coming out game. I feel like dude. that was our we're like like let's show the world. Let's show let, let's show everybody this is what we are, what we're about. So uh, we we heard it. We we heard it a lot. We 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 just went. We just we try to block it out. Really, you kind of, but you really can't block the first game that is out. You want to hear. You want to see what people were, what people are talking about. We knew that people projected us to lose for sure. We knew what we projected. But we were going on a road. We, this was the time, like, to show everybody, like, we we're going on a road. We we're going to California. They they got a new head coach, so we really don't know anything about this team now. They they're going to try to move fast pace, but let's play our style of football. That's basically what a coach fit. That's what coach fit talk is. <laughs> we're going to play our style of football. So yeah, I mean that game was awesome. I you know just the. Going forward on fourth downs, you guys having you know multiple sacks and big big plays, the safety. It was just that was just a like you said a big coming out party. Did uh, your senior year was there another game that kind of really stuck out to you as as one that you really like to think back on? And I know you had what two sacks against ECU and had another you know couple of uh of big moments. And anything else that kind of sticks out most to you? Uh, that, well, two sacks in the game is always, you always feel like you're on fire, you know, so yeah. that, that, that game definitely sticks out. Um, but no, that whole, it's, it's hard to really, it's hard to really put in words. Like, you don't really, I remember a lot of locker room moments that, that year and, and stuff like that. Maybe not, not particular moments in the game. It, it seemed like a blur more because like we were just having fun. We were. We were, it was like a, a, a having, we were always having fun on the field. We we're always just playing together. So I, don't really, I can't really give you a, a sp- I just think that whole year was just a really good year for sure. Take me, uh, take me back. I, I want to go back to the, the Rose Bowl real quick. There's a lot of talk about like, you know, what coaches do, like how that instills that confidence in their team. And, and Brent mentioned like the fourth downs and like the aggressiveness and going for it and putting, because a lot of times, like when you go for it on fourth down, what you're saying is we trust our defense. Mm-hmm. You know, even if we don't get it, we know our defense is going to gonna get our back. Yeah. What did that do for the locker room? Like realizing like, you know, you didn't have many opportunities in that first season. Uh, obviously it was a, it was a rough one, but in the right out, right out of the gate in year two, like, look, I believe in you guys. If there's a fourth down, we're going for it. We're putting our foot on the gas. We came here to win. Like, what did that do for the locker room to know that Fick and the staff like really did have your back that they, they really were there for you? It was more so just, so, so I'll rewind that back a little bit. So more, even more. So we we did this thing. Um, so we had this. So before we got out there, we had uh, like we used to sit like all the line would sit together. More more so, you know. Yeah. All the like all the numbers. So everybody would sit together. When he got there, we we went in these teams. Like so, so my my locker got moved from like the back corner, like by to like literally as soon as you walk in the locker room. It was my it was my locker room. It was my locker. Then I had a t- so then I had. Uh, who did I, I had? I, I just had my team. I had I had my my just my team that they put together. I had Huber. I had uh, who else I have on my team? I had I had a lot of guys on my team. I had like they they forced you out of your comfort every, zone. Just, huh? They forced you out of your comfort zone where you had to yeah. get to know the whole team. Yeah. So so in the base, yeah, base guys. I just never even, like like we were talking. You know, like what's going on? So so now that we're on teams, I'm the captain of this team and. And and I had to do certain things. They had to depend on me to do certain things. I don't have to depend on everyone and them to do certain things. That so so I think that's where it really started. More so they wanted us to believe in each other, really. Like when we go like that, that that our junior year, we uh my junior year, it was really like uh we don't really know what they're gonna do. They don't really know what we're gonna do, you know. That that my senior year was like more when we know they're gonna go out there, get that first down. We know they're going to go score. We know they're going to do what we need them to do. They know we're going to stop. You, you know, if they need us, we're going to play for them. If we need them, they're going to play for us. We're, it's complimentary football, so we we just we just play for each other, really. And they put it, and that's how they. That's how I think that's how they wanted it to be. They want us to to just believe in each other, and that's more so. I think what helped with us, like we know Des, we knew Des was going to go out there. We knew Mike was going to run, get the first down. We knew nobody was going to stop him getting away. It, it was first down. 
if it was fourth and two, we got it. It's awesome. So it, that mindset leads to a lot of confidence, and that confidence all of a sudden builds up how you're playing as your as your personal self. What at what point did you kind of feel during your career at UC that hey, I've I've, I've got a legit shot at a at a at a lifetime playing the sport of football? Really, just just I feel like. That came from me just just getting my reps and them believe, like them believing me believing in me putting me in certain situations where like I knew I had to make a play you know so and I would make plays and I feel like um that that comes more for 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 you as a as an individual confidence level and like like you said the team was winning I was playing good so that helped my comp- confidence uh, I started doing more things I started getting recognition so. That that was really that would really help the confidence of me, like being younger and playing playing better every year. Do you have some like Aaron, you got a question? Go ahead. Do you, do you have someone on the team possibly that would you would say kind of was the uh the locker room clown, if you will, kind of someone that always was was joking around? You know, i I went back and watched your uh your wired Wednesday, and it seemed like you and you and Wiggs had a little back and forth going on. He he, he <laughs> You call you call them wiggles. He calls you wobbles. I mean, you don't have to go into the wobbles <laughs> thing, but uh, I mean, go into the wobbles thing if you want to. But like, kind of, who was who was it in the locker room that was kind of really bringing the energy and, and and making everyone be excited, but at the same time relaxed and, and confident? Uh, yeah, no. So, really, who are who are our our locker room clowns? We had a lot of those guys. We we had uh, Corey. I know you guys remember Corey Cunningham. We had uh. Cortez, we had a lot of uh, guys who just always who were just always clown, uh, but we're we're cool. And when you needed them to be, we're cool. Like Corey was a was a captain, Cortez was a captain, you know. So it was always though, you know, we would play around, we would joke, we would have fun, but we would know when to lock in and get serious. Um, now the Wiggles, no, why would, no Wiggles is his that is actually. He likes to be called Wiggles, you know. So if y'all ever want to see him, just call him Wiggles. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what he likes to be called. No, why would uh, we? So me and my trainer, or the trainer Michelle, we had a a game in the in the uh, the uh, the the training room. It was a little rehab game. It, it was it was fun. Well, not even a rehab game, just a an extras game. You know, like just get extra, like do extra stuff for your body. So we were going through the game and I kept beating her. I kept beating her, boom. So she was called, she was wobbled because she would keep falling down. But before I left out, everybody thought it would be funny because they knew I was wired up to call me wobbles. And then that was a big thing. But I'm not wobbles. Everybody else knows me. It's Michelle, our trainer. She's wobbles. How, how about when, when Big Country goes to the NFL and then he comes back after a year in the NFL and all of a sudden he was big city? He had designer jeans on. Had the shades in the little in the pot, like in the in the. I mean, I was like, who who is this man? And what did they do with Big Country? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, no, Big Country. He's all. He, I think he's always going to be the same to me. He's he's hilarious. Oh, that, of course, I love he, him. He's, yeah, he's hilarious. But uh, no, but you know what I'm talking about. He came back on the sidelines and he was g'd <laughs> up like. That wasn't the big country that I remember. That hey, that's he got he he went to Arizona. He went he he went to Arizona. He started getting uh, he was a superstar. <laughs> <laughs> nah. uh, you're, you're in the NFL. Um, you get to play behind what many people consider the greatest defensive player in the history of the sport. And, and before I get to that, there's a lot of Cincinnati fans mad at you. It ain't your fault. There's a lot of Cincinnati fans mad at you. What do you say to them that they're mad that, that you were well, on the Super fair, Bowl championship In team? fairness, Chad, it's it's separating the art from the artist. We're not mad at him. We're just <laughs> mad at the team that he plays for. <laughs> no. Uh, hey. <laughs> it happens. Was that what did you think going into that game though? When you like when it, it, it was it was you, it Rams Bengals, where you're like, oh boy, no, I knew tough? a lot of people. I, it was a it was a lot of it was gonna be a lot of fun playing the Bengals because I knew a lot of people from from Cincinnati, so it was, it was gonna be a lot of fun. Uh, but yeah, it was my my, my 
Yeah. <laughs> but but what is it like like playing with a guy playing in a in a D line room with a guy like Aaron Donald where you get to watch what is the epitome of greatness every snap? You don't really you don't really get to guys don't really get a chance that I feel like I, I've got this I couldn't ask for a better coming coming to the NFL situation. That's yeah. like to to say I got this like learn from him and just be around him, know who he is as a person and, and, and call him a friend, you know, that people don't really get to, to get to experience things like that. And I just feel like that's that that's gonna definitely help my career. That he's he's helped my career just being him and, and helping me in, in ways I wouldn't have been able to to do myself. So he's been a, a brother to me since I've got here. He's he's helped me out. He's He's taught me things I've, I've, I wouldn't have known. And I had a great D-line room from him to to my coach and to everybody else in that, that room. I had some other really good guys. So I came into a, a very good a very good situation, a very good room of people and good good guys. And, and AD is just definitely one of definitely one of those guys. So that that was really you couldn't actually be in a better position or situation. Bang. The Bengals did a pretty good job on him for like a, a half. Was there a point in that game where you were like, "Uh oh, I saw him turn the light on. They're in trouble." <laughs> well, you can't. I mean, hey, when, when, when you when you jump on his back and <laughs> no, <laughs> no uh, yeah, no, he he's just a winner. He he wants to win, so it's it's it's. Is that's what he wants to do, and, and he, he just you and everybody wants to win for him. You like that's the type of guy you want to win for. So it's just like we all we we came together. We and we just wanted to we wanted that for him, for sure. And he wanted it for himself and all of us as well. So yeah, I I don't I think I seen him have it on since before the game. Since we won the last game, he won. So so yeah. You had your chance for a big playoff moment. Tell tell us about the pick. Tell us about uh, getting that opportunity and, and getting a chance to to put your stamp on. Like I, you know, I, I'm a reason why we're here. I'm out, I'm out here making plays. <laughs> no, yeah, no, for sure. No, the pick was that was a that was a moment I won't ever forget. I feel like you know how like time just goes regular. Every, everybody else is <laughs> like, hey, you know, regular. We're just talking and everything. For me, at that second, it literally everything froze. <laughs> like I was the ball, the ball was up in the air for like an hour. It felt like <laughs> I was just sitting there, like, like dang. But no, that was a. Like... We, we lost your audio. Ooh. There we go. There, you're, you're back. Gotcha. Uh, like I, that was a great moment for me. Um, I can't even put that in words. It was just a. That was an emotional moment. I wanted to, I I shared that with my mother, with my grandmother. It was it was it was just a very emotional moment. Um and it was a blessing, really. <laughs> like really I like to see just to see that play like even develop. I was like I was like watching it just all was going slower and slower. I was like, oh man, this really this ball is really about to come here. <laughs> now during don't this drop time, it don't drop it don't drop it don't, don't drop, drop it. it please don't drop it. <laughs> now during the the super bowl week the rams actually brought out jimmy smith for yes. a, a workout um because yep. cincinnati has kevin huber mm -hmm. or had i don't know if he's coming back or not um but he's a left-footed kicker and so they yes. brought out jimmy to have a left-footed kicker there in practice i would assume that's at least how it was reported. But you got to, you know, spend a little bit of time. He, he was on the show with us went during our subathon, and he, he said that you guys at least got to talk a little bit while he was out there. He was only out there, I think, for a, a day. But uh, what was that like having somebody from back home there during the, the whole prep for the Super Bowl? You know, I, so it, it was actually funny. I was running – we were – so we, we practiced down in um, <clears throat> the Rose Bowl because the, the, the weather out here – it doesn't get cold, but it gets windy. It, it really gets windy. So we were out in passing, you know, practicing. So it was like, man, I remember the last time I came here, it was like the UCLA game. So I was like, wow, this is crazy. It's the whole the thing feels crazy. Like the, the stadium feels just different with nobody in it. So we were running out and I like I just I didn't I didn't see him at first, but then like he just started running towards me. I was like, oh, it's seven. We 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 hung out for a second, but 
Yeah, no, that's my guy. I, hey, it was good to see him during that week. Uh, he uh, wanted us to win too, just to let y'all know. So, well, well he, he said as much. <laughs> he's he's also yeah. a veteran of this podcast. Jimmy 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 okay. is a uh, is a is a favorite. How can you not love Jimmy Smith? Like it, he's, for real. Yeah. No, no, he ever, he's a good guy. Huh? Has he ever got you any cherries from home? No, he never got me any cherries. Uh, we talk about his his uh, foot tattoo. I, that he's the reason I got one. A foot tattoo, okay. but uh, I never got any <laughs> cherry from. Yeah, no, 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 no. You mean foot I would think that the damn kid owns a cherry farm? Like the, the whole team should be getting Australian cherries, right? We got to talk to him about this. I I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, that's his. That's his family business. They own a giant cherry orchard in Australia. Well, I'm gonna definitely be talking to Jimmy. I'm gonna get him. <laughs> hey, <laughs> he's gonna send his awesome. You guys are in need of a punter now, right? Like. It, I don't know what contractually how they like, you know, but the, the punter position currently is open in Los Angeles. Yeah. I don't, I don't know what they're going to do with it, but they definitely seen them. They, they seen what I seen uh, from him. He's a good, he's a good kicker. So what, what's Taz up to? I know you still talk to him. Uh, yeah. We're actually, we're supposed to, we're supposed to all meet up uh, and just hang out before the, uh, the spring game. Oh really? The spring game. Sweet. So yeah, yeah. So we'll we'll probably all be up there during the uh, the spring game. Uh, so if you yeah, so I'll see you guys definitely for sure around. What was it like watching this team go undefeated for the second time, make the playoffs, play Alabama, be on that stage? Like as an alum, like what what's it like watching this team do something nobody thought they could they could do, they could accomplish? You you ask anybody that knows me, and like that didn't like if you ask anybody, I was all I already knew we we're we're the best team in the nation. Just ask <laughs> you. I want to just ask anybody. I always <laughs> said, but no, it's I knew who we. I knew the guys that were there. I knew like we just we we were on that we we're there on that 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 they're they're just going up. So it was. Like I knew that was. I feel like I knew that they had something special in them, and that and that and our program ha- will keep having special guys go there, and, and and it will keep being special for for many years. I know you were at the SMU game, right? I think I saw you on the sideline. During yeah, the yep. game, During your uh, your bye week with the Rams, so is is that something that you really feel with the current staff wants to keep the past players a part of the program because that's something that Fick has mentioned numerous times and something Brady's mentioned as well. Do you, do you kind of just feel that bond that, you know what, not only was this team the one breaking, you know, setting these records and, and being the first, you know, blah, blah, blah team to make it to the college football playoffs and things of that sort, but it's also your program that, that did it as well. Is that something that you really sense with the staff? Yeah, definitely. I I can I can text I can text Coach Brady and tell him I'm coming in to work in today, work out today. He'll he'll be like, okay, come cool, come down. Tell tell me a time. Boom, or he'll he'll yes. They they like if I come to the program anytime, any like they'll they'll definitely want me to come in. They'll they'll definitely just they'll be very inviting. They they want me there, you know, to spend time or just around. They want other guys to come back just to show like. This was this is a family. This you'll always be a part of the family. They still have pictures of me up in the the uh, the black cat. Um, that's when you know our, our work hard board. Yeah. So so they so it's like definitely they they want to keep you a part of the culture. They want to keep you. This is our you know this is what this is what we have to offer. This is where you can go. You know for the for the future guys who come there. Like you'll always be a part of what we have here. So you so- cats hit you up for a donation yet, or you think they're waiting for that second contract? <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to answer. Right you, you don't have to answer. I'm just having fun. It sounds like you're keeping a pretty good pulse though on the team. Who are you excited to see in this upcoming season? Uh, playing wise, who are we excited to play? No, no like which, which players, players are you excited to see on on this new Bearcats team? Oh, on the new Bearcats. Um, I'm I'm just excited to see. I want to just see what they what they do again. How they how they bounce. How they how they show the world again after that year. We were like 
that this is who we are. Like we're one of the, the, the teams, we're the top team. Like, so you have to go to us every year. So, um, but really I, I want to see what they do at quarterback this year. I, I don't, I'm not in the program every, every, every day. So I don't, I don't get to see. So you I'm, know I'm ben. over playing. Huh? You know Ben? Yeah, you know, I know Ben. I know Ben. ben me and Ben. Me and Ben have a good relationship <laughs> too. <laughs> yeah, I know Ben. Um, but I just want to see everything they do. I want to see how they, like, like what goes on. I'm, I'm a fan now, so I love to come back and see how we, like, how we build the team year in, year out. I'm curious, when you saw Majay for the first time, like, did you know pretty quick, like, this is a dude with all the potential in the world? Of course, he was, like, 203 pounds when yeah. he got on campus. <laughs> right. but, but, but could you tell, like, this is a guy, if he maximizes his potential, could be ridiculous? Yeah, definitely. Majay, a lot of people, like, a lot of people get – like gifts and, and talents and and they they're cool you know they they do it they you know they go play out they just go out there and play him you can tell like football is important to him what well, my well, you can tell him like well he'll he'll want to work out like when i came back last year uh it was always me and my j eli he was always just around wanting to work out want to do extra want to he had he worked out that earlier that day he would still want to come you know later on you know, work out, do some field work with me later on. So you could tell that things like, you know, were, were very important for him. So, so what went through your mind when you hear that Cincinnati was accepted into the Big 12? Was it jealousy? Was it excitement for the program? Like, what were you thinking when you hear Cincinnati is now going to be moving up to a, a bigger, better conference? Uh, well, what I said around what I said around uh, in L.A. is, well, we already bit the best – Big 12 team, so <laughs> I was I, I was excited. I was excited for him. Right? No, I'm really excited for him. I'm I'm happy for him. Um, because it's just gonna it's just gonna help those younger guys. You know, it's gonna show everybody that what comes through Cincinnati is we 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 have those guys. We and we've always had them. So um, no, really, it, it was excitement. I wanna I want them to 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 have the, the chance to boom it. And, and for them to ball out and do what they need to do with, with their opportunity. Maybe just a little jealous. I can not even be jealous. I was, I was happy for him. I'm, 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 their big, I'm literally their biggest cheerleader at all the time. So I, I can not even be jealous. That's awesome. I, well, I think you just have to look down at your Super Bowl ring whenever the <laughs> there you go. mid jealousy feeling. There you comes. go. <laughs> no, but no, talk to it, you know, because I we can touch on the Bearcats a lot, but I want to talk. Just a tiny bit more about the Super Bowl. I like not everyone gets to experience what that's like. The the week leading up to it, the the game itself, and then immediately following, where you just sit back and you say, "Look at you know all this work that I put in from Bedford High School, wrestling and and being a Bearcat, and then being a Bearcat again, going through everything you did in in your years there. That now all of a sudden you're you're a Super Bowl champion. I, it's kind of what what was going through your mind as that clock hit zero. And all of a sudden, everyone was just out there celebrating. It, it was just a – that's a that's a feeling you can't even put in words. That's that's something you grow up wanting to do. You want to you want to play football to win the Super Bowl. That's like you that's that's a dream come true. So like I I, I was really in the the middle of living one of my dreams out because it, it it's literally the Super Bowl. So you really can't like like I like I, how I told everybody. I just can't not be happy right now. It's it's anything you do, I, I will just be happy. I, it, it doesn't matter like what's going on. I'm I'm, I'm happy. So you can't wipe like, the smile off my face. Yeah, I can't. Like I'm I'm in a good mood. I'm in a happy mood. I'm in a positive mood. And we're 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 Super Bowl champs. So only like only 54, 55 other teams can say that. You know what I'm saying? Other other uh, only 55 other teams can say that. So right now, I'm just. That was just that was exciting. That was it was it was like one of the, it was the best moment like in football. Like you're like one of our, my teammates, Vaughn, said he put it as you're in football heaven now. So you you really get to you really experience it. It's nothing you can like tell somebody. They have to go through it. To it, it's hard to it, it's it's. And that's that's the one thing they can't ever take away. Like yeah. no matter what, you're, you're gonna get the ring. It's gonna have your name on it. <laughs> are, are you gonna wear the ring around? 
you gonna put it away? Uh, I've been wearing that thing everywhere. <laughs> first, that? first week, it might be stuck on my finger. I might not be able to take it off. <laughs> it might just be stuck there. No, but um, no, I def- I want to. I'm gonna. I'm gonna put that up with with, with some more of my football stuff. I'm gonna just. It's, it's, yeah, that's that's gonna be my big prize, my big my big possession <laughs> for sure. For the Bengals fans that might be listening, what's something that you got to learn from uh, Big Wit? Big Wit, uh, Big Wit was just he was he was a leader. He, he was when I came in, he was he was just a leader. Um, I don't remember when I was a rookie, so we were. I it was the first day I met him. You just think you see this dude. This is like he's a vet. He's like the great, like one of the, the greatest tackles. Yeah, yeah, he, he's huge. So yeah. <laughs> you really like, oh, like you, you really just you're walking like with like you're walking with greatness. So it's like okay, like, but he he's a he's a he's a good dude. Uh, he's he's super positive. He he wants to donate. He made he made me want to be more of like like he just won the Man of the Year World Award, uh, and that doesn't. I don't even think the the recognition means anything for him. I think it's just him being him. That's so, what he does. Yeah, that's really, like really what he does. He he always wants to give back. Always wants to give to 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 others. So he he's really a he's really a good role model to have, man. A pos- a positive person to have in your life, really. Did you see him having that conversation with his kids on the field that we got to see the video of later, where he was telling his kids, "This is this is my last game." No, I didn't even get to see him. I was I was with my mother and my sister, so I didn't I didn't even really get to see him. Did Fick hit you up after the Super Bowl? Huh? Did Fick hit you up after the Super Bowl? Congratulate you? Uh, yeah, yeah. Him, all the whole staff, the, him, uh, the whole staff, my old coaches, they all hit me up. Mm-hmm. Very cool. So, tell me, I, now that you had success this past season, you, you saw the field, you performed really well when you were on the field as well. Does that just kind of that on top of the the positive vibes you get after winning a Super Bowl? Does that give you some a, a different level? Of momentum heading into the off season and in the next year, uh, yeah, it definitely does. Um, uh, it, it definitely, it definitely helps. You know, it just, it just gives you that reminder. You know, everybody needs that reminder of you know, I, who I am. This is what I do. You know, so I, like I'm good at what I do. You know, so, so really, yeah, yeah. This, this was, this was that that, that good year. It helped it helped me to be won the Super Bowl. So it was just all a. This has all been a, a a a good year for me, and I just want to build on it, really. So, so next year I'll definitely be trying to build on this this year. We had this year for sure. So you're out in LA. You've been out there for a couple of years now, and it is Hollywood. So yeah. has anyone out there left you starstruck when you met them? Um, let's see. I've okay. met I've met a lot. I've, I think I've met a lot of a lot of, of stars. Uh, I met Jamie Fox. Yeah, that's. Uh, I got to talk to him for a little minute uh, before his movie his, his uh, movie came out, so that was a a big moment for me. Um, I met uh, that was I think that was the biggest star I've met for me just because so, I, so I would watch his. Huh? Go ahead, go ahead. I, I just because I would watch his uh, his TV shows and, uh, and and stuff like that, or his in his movies. Mm. But I think that was the biggest star, and yeah, he definitely let me star star because he was just a. <laughs> He he was just a normal like everybody. He's just a normal person. But before I met him, I was like, "That's Jamie Foxx." He was just talking to us like regular, just, just yeah. That's because that's because you're a big deal too, right? <laughs> I was a, I wasn't right there around him talking about autographs. <laughs> so here's the deal, right? Like, so you've seen the legendary Tupac and a C. Paul picture, right? Yep. Do you know how that came about? No, I don't. I don't even know how that is. So Corey Blunt and Nick Van Exel, who played on the '92 Final Four team, played for the Lakers. And when they were out in LA, they geared up as many of the rappers as they could find with the C. Paul. So the challenge is, you got to get the C. Paul on somebody famous, right? Like, you, <laughs> because that's that's really how that went down. Was was Corey gave Tupac. The the, the 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 hoodie, whatever the, yeah. the, the the three quarter zip or whatever it was, yeah. and 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 that has gotten play to this day. That like you know, Tupac was down with the Bearcats, and it happened because there were a couple Bearcats out there that were with the Lakers. Obviously, back then, 
like the West Coast rap scene, they were hanging out with the Lakers all the time. Yeah, uh, yeah. So so Tupac got got fitted up and and it's been uh what 30 years later that that picture is still in rotation. Oh yeah, it's still yeah. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'll try to get the the. I'll see what I can do. I'm gonna try to work my magic. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. I we we have kept you for a long time. I, I greatly appreciate here. Aaron's pulling up the. Uh, there you go. That there there it is. Hey, yeah, yeah there it is. There you go. That you was, know, that, that was, was Corey Blunt. For, that was my profile picture for about when I uh, committed to Cincinnati for about uh, two weeks. There you go. Now, now you know the backstory. It was a bear cat that, that got in the gear. So okay, did Corey okay. did Corey take that picture then? Uh, I don't know if Corey took that picture, but I know Corey gave him okay. that particular piece of clothing. Okay, okay. Well, back then, remember, like, the Jordan Jumpman Cincinnati stuff was everything. Like, yeah, everybody yeah. rocked that. So, like, I'm sure – I'm actually wouldn't be surprised if they were like, hey, you played for Cincinnati – Hook me up because the, the beauty of it at the time, and we've talked about this here before when they did all the Jordan stuff, Cincinnati was really the only partner that, that they had that was red and black. So they could do some stuff for Cincinnati mm -hmm. okay. in the same colorway as the bulls. So okay. they could play with some stuff that they couldn't do with the bulls and Cincinnati was kind of like the testing ground, like right. you could have a little bit more fun. But... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they would put all the Cincinnati stuff. There was a, a like a Nike outlet in Chicago. And they would put the Cincinnati stuff in the Nike outlet, and it would sell out almost immediately because it looked like it was the typically the, the Chicago stuff, the yeah. bull stuff. So okay, that that's okay. kind of the the backstory of that. Uh, yeah, Aaron, real quick on the mailbag questions before we let Cope go. Yep. Um, Sorry, Cope. We cut you a long-ass time, man. I appreciate it. Nah, you're good. Checks in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> First question is, uh, what kind of difference was there when practicing under Tuberville compared to Fickle? Also, oh, what do you boy. miss most about Clifton? Um. Uh, so, with Tuberville, it was more of a... The country club. Seen? Yeah, you seen Tuberville over there in the in the in the golf cart, but you didn't ever really see Tuberville. <laughs> like, you, <laughs> you never really seen Tuberville. You just seen him like watching us. Like, <laughs> he was over talking to us more than he was talking to y'all. Yeah, he, he didn't he didn't he didn't really do anything. With with uh, <laughs> with Big, <laughs> with Big is more. He's literally, he's literally in practice. He's 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 in practice with us. Like when it's time to go practice. He's at practice as well. Like he's, 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 he's showing things. He's running drills. He's running like team drills and stuff like that. And he's, he's, he's down there with the D line sometimes. He's down there with the linebackers. He'll, so he's, he's more hands on. He's running drills. He's showing, he's, he's, he's showing the technique he wants and how, you know, so it's no confusion, you know. Um, and the most, what I miss most about Clifton, just, I just miss the, the environment really. Um, I miss some of the food places. I miss um, Island Fridays. Yeah, I miss I miss that whole that whole my whole the whole uh, environment and atmosphere. Um, let's see if there's any other questions here. That may be the only real one that was. I thought there was one more that was kind of related. What's a, I'll ask while you're looking here. What's yeah. after football for Cope? Have you, have you ever thought about that? Have you thought about like is coaching something you want to do? Do you want to you want to uh, branch out yeah. and do some business stuff? Like what what do you think's after football? Uh yeah, so I'm 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 uh I want to get some businesses going uh right now while I'm in the the NFL. I want to I'm I'm working on a trucking business and and some more stores. Uh I actually want to get a a a smoothie shop soon. We'll see in uh in Cincinnati in Clifton. I'm gonna call it Bearcat Nutrition. So hey, oh, we'll see. Hey, so. you know we'll we'll, we'll be glad to spot like we'll partner up. We we I, and I'm a smoothie guy. I love a good smoothie. Yeah, for sure, for and sure. You know, we'll like they, they, do, they do smoothies constantly. No, mm -hmm. no, definitely. That's why. Yeah, so I, I definitely want to do that out in uh, Cincinnati. So next time I'm there, I'll, I'll probably be. I'll probably be working on that type, that stuff. So, um, 
Yeah, I, I want to do businesses, but giving back to uh, doing nonprofits and helping kids and coaching, that that's all in my – I want to do all that, too, in my future. I don't really want to coach, like, higher than high school, but I want to, like, to actually give back, yeah. Did you play coach. with Chris more? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I played with Chris. Yeah, Chris was a great guy, too, for sure. Chris Chris wants to open a skyline. Like, that's his – like, his, his post-career, he wants to franchise a skyline. Maybe you can get in on a skyline with Chris. Uh, yeah, you, <laughs> you weren't a skyline guy. Uh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> be careful. Be careful. Coach. I'll, I'll, I'll get you out of this one. Here's here's a question for you. What's your dream ideal away non conference matchup? Could it be based on opponent, location, atmosphere, rivalry, etc.? Uh, in college or or in college? college. Yeah. yeah. For the Bearcats, um, I would want to see a. Hmm, what, what would it be a? No, you know what game I really want to see that is actually coming up, and uh, it's it's actually a perfect like I want to see Cincinnati versus Boise, the the Cincinnati versus Boise State game because I have a teammate, field? huh? On the blue field? Yeah, on the blue field. I want to see us <laughs> go out there. And I would. I just want to see us in the all red or all black or whatever we wear, all white, whatever, and just go out there. And, and, and I want to, I want to see you guys versus boys. I like that, but um, because uh, they've just been a, a, a iconic like school who was who started getting bigger as well, just like us. So I, I, I would like to see that matchup. But I think it would just be a lot of history in that matchup. Um, uh, but uh, bring back the keg of nails, huh? Bring back the keg of nails. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. So we need to beat them. We need to beat them for sure. Uh, I have a, I'm gonna have a little bet on that one with my, with my teammates. So yeah, uh, let, but let, I think let's that's do the, what, Boise. Your Boise, your your spot. That's your answer. Yeah, I think I, Boise, Boise, going playing against Boise State. Yeah, I gotta ask you one more because this is the biggest hot topic with UC fans. What's your What's your stance on the curse of the white helmets? Are you Are you pro white helmets? Did you like the white helmets? Are you anti white helmets? The fans hate the white helmets because they wore them in the Sugar Bowl and it didn't go well and they never want to see the white helmets again. The players, from my knowledge, love the white helmets. So what's your take on the white helmets? Uh I like yeah, I like the white helmets. I like wearing all white sometimes. So it's it, <laughs> like I like I like the look. I, we when we went out to UCLA, we had the white helmets on. Yep. And that was our that was our coming out party. That's that's how we started it all. So you don't really want to get away from the white helmets. I think that's just it, and it's a cleaner. I feel like that's a cleaner look. I feel like the all white sometimes is, it's it's a. I like that look. But there's nothing better than going nip at night. All black. Oh yeah, no, it's nothing. The all the blackout. No, yeah, nothing better than that for sure. Isn't it? But I think I like all. I think we have a we have a good we have a good mix really. Yeah, I want to like we when we put the red helmets on too. That that's a three great colors: got, red, black, and white. Like you yeah, we we, yeah, than we have some really. I, I think my favorite helmet though was the the red helmets with the numbers on the side. That was my favorite time. Was that was definitely the one oh, with was the, the was triangles the in it. They, they kind of had the triangles in them. No wait, did our numbers? I don't think that we had our numbers on the red helmets, do we? There was one that had the numbers on the Oh, back. no, the triangle. Yeah, that no, the triangle on the side. I'll take it back to my, my That was my the homecoming year. game. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. That was like my freshman year. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those were interesting. And, yeah. and finally, last question. What's it really like as a player running out to a full nip at night, like lights on, blacked out stadium, crowd going nuts? What, what was that feeling really like as a player getting to experience, like, like nip at night it was that i don't think i've never been anywhere else in college football and i don't think i've ever would want to go anywhere else in college football like you know i wouldn't i wouldn't want to be somewhere and have to come here and play us at nip, nip at night and see our fans and see how it, it really like uh jumps in there so i think that's just it, it's in itself is um it's our it's our extra our extra boost. It, yeah. It's nobody else in college really has it. Like people think, like I don't think people think how Cincinnati gets as loud as it really does. That our stadium, like actually, like it, it, it gets super loud. So yeah. All right. Well, I'm gonna say it again because I know you like hearing it. Super Bowl champion 
Bam. Big Marquise time. Copeland. Like, it, it doesn't Appreciate get any that. better than that, brother. No, sir. We appreciate you coming on with this, man. This was awesome. It was a great time chopping it up and getting some Bearcat stories in and uh, and and reliving the old days and and enjoying where you're at in your career. I know you're uh, you couldn't be more blessed to to be on a team that is going to be in the mix to compete for championships for a long time. And 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 we love having you on, and we look forward to having you back again because there's nothing better than being a repeat guest on a podcast. That's for sure. Right? Definitely, definitely. Thank you guys for having me on for sure, and uh, and uh, and getting to talk to the the, the Bearcat fan base and everybody. So thank you guys, appreciate it. Good appreciate luck it, next year, but not too much luck. <laughs> all right, <laughs> well, I appreciate you guys. Thanks, we'll Cole. see you at the Go. spring game, brother. Go right, enjoy that you. LA weather. We'll see you, man. All right, see you guys. Yep. All right, Marquise Copeland, Los Angeles Rams, former Cincinnati Bearcat. Uh, you can hit, I think there's a, the leave exit studio. or whatever, leave studio. There you go. Yep. See, bro. Perfect. There we go. That was outstanding. Oh yeah. I, I know it upset some people just initially. I mean, I wasn't, <laughs> come on. I wasn't going to ask this question, right? Like, <laughs> I, I, I wanted to ask, but I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying to take away from the fact like your ring's a fraud. Like, no, that, that ain't it. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, and this one too. One those... These were the first. These were the first two things we. I got. mean, I, I did show this, but you know, he he laughed at it when he, he saw did. it. He I did. watched him read it. <laughs> now, Cope Cope in his entire time here was an awesome dude. That smile was always Cope. That's a million like, dollar smile. I mean, always had that smile. Always enjoyed life. Always enjoyed being in the program, around the program. So, uh, a huge thank you to Marquise for coming on the show. And uh, we we set a high. If this is what the off is going to be like, I mean, we set a high bar with with guest one. Go, well, we had James, and, and now we got Marquise. Like that's that's your first Super Bowl champion on the show, right? Uh, kind of, yes, kind of. <coughs> on this show, on, on well, after they won. So we had Kelsey after he won. And the file corrupted bum, in bum, post. Bum, bum. And we never got to have him back on again. Yet. Picker, it didn't happen. <laughs> we, had, we had Jason. We had Jason. He gave us like 45 minutes. It was Picks gold. It didn't happen. Did, it he, was, did he sing the national anthem? No. It was that phenomenal. <laughs> it was phenomenal. It was an awesome interview. And me and Tim Adams are the only two people that have heard it. Oh man. That and hurts. there was no way I was gonna be like, hey man, can we do that again? Like, can <laughs> no, we bro, record? Fun. Yeah. Um, but it was like I the problem was there was no indication that it was happening live. It wasn't until after the show when I went to edit the show and put mm -hmm. it on yeah. the, the platform that it was all like ones and zeros. Beep boop beep. beep, 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 beep and I yeah. was like the oh, binary code of the entire interview. <laughs> I, I wanted to cry so bad. Like I, I that's I would have. I wanted to cry so bad, and I had to send Jason and Tim a message. Like I, neither of you did anything wrong, but the software that we were using. This was my bad, y'all. Years ago, like where you know things weren't nearly as uh, reliable as they are now. Yeah. Like now, we just go live and it like records. Like. We, mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, back then you had to go through a couple different steps to record and it was, it, it was, Garage it was iffy. And it was iffy. Napster. Has he come, has he come back since? Uh, so I asked him, uh, like two years later to come back on, I sent him a text. And then the next time I saw him, he was like, bro, I didn't pick up my phone for six weeks. So he said file corrupted. <laughs> he said, it, no, the, the thing is, Jason's like literally a mountain man. I know. It was at that that point, like right after the season where a lot of NFL guys just for like a month or two, they go into hibernation. Mm -hmm. Right. And he was like, I I'm sorry. By the time I got to it, it was like five weeks after you asked. Um, and it, it, yeah. So we haven't had him back. Maybe, may I'll send him a text right now. Hey, kind of like the, uh, like the, do you know Guduli one from the the COVID shutdown? But you were able to resurrect that one a little bit. Yeah, like some of them you could save, but that one in particular was like the entire file was corrupted. It was 
like I did. I sat here for like 30 minutes at my computer and just wanted to like, I wanted to break the monitor, like you know the 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 GIF or the breaking yeah, the just keyboard, slamming it, yeah. smashing everything. I wanted to go. I wanted to go. Um, uh, uh, office space yeah. and like with a bat and break everything. But anyhow, timestamp Marquise Copeland, Brent. Do you What's know? Up? Y'all, we have a timestamp sponsor. Urban Artifact. I heard it's a beverage company. It's a beverage company. Their tap rooms located in Northside, sixteen sixty Blue Rock Street. They're open Wednesday through Sunday. Pizza kitchen on site. Beers are Ooh. sold online. Shipping to select states, and we currently distribute to thirteen states. With more on the way. They use seven hundred thousand pounds of real fruit every year. Over ten percent of the fruit used in making fruit beers nationwide goes to Urban Artifact. Their bar backsplash is made from repurposed wood flooring from the old gymnasium where the brew house now operates. They're the largest sour only beer brewery in the United States. Wow. And uh, I just have to send them your address. They're going to send you guys some urban artifact. How about that? Phenomenal. I will. Outstanding I will, interview with. Go ahead. I will down some urban artifact. There's no doubt in my mind. Is it, do they have like is. Like when you say fruit beer, I I, I personally sours. Heard of them. sours sours like sours. If okay. you go there though, it, they're in the basement of a church. Yeah, and like they do the the they do like different parties, and you can rent out the church above. But all of the seating area downstairs is pews, pews from the <laughs> church. Yeah, and then they have like a laser room in back. It's it's a wild little place. Okay, okay. So we are happy, super super happy to have Urban Artifact. On board as the sponsor of the stop the timestamp. Not only see there, this is how we know Urban Artifact is all in with BCJ. Not uh, only the BBP, but also the BCJ podcast. If there's a timestamp in this network, it's sponsored by Urban Artifact. Get yourself some Urban Artifact. Get to the Tap House. Uh, go to the website. Have them ship it to you. Uh, whatever the case may be. So yeah, Urban mm -hmm. Artifact. That Proud. Sponsor of the Bearcat Journal Podcast Network. That's one sour timestamp right there. I tell you what. <laughs> All right, we, we'll we'll get probably back to football next week. Yeah. Spring spring practice rolls back in. Yeah, that was tomorrow. Good. It was sure. the dad joke of dad jokes. Like it, it's exactly what we expect. That's what we pay you for, Brent. Amen. Um, regular old get Danny Tanner over here <laughs> Wait until I become a real dad, but go ahead. <laughs> Cut it out. Um, so I, I don't think we like, I don't think we need to jump into football much, no. uh, right now. It, so we don't do another two hour and 45 minute podcast before <laughs> rather upset at that. Let's, uh, let's jump to basketball. We'll get back to football next week. Yeah. Um, I mean, as I think the only thing football tomorrow. wise would just be like, the the recruiting aspect like the under armor a bunch of targets and, and yeah would kind of get, take it home the mvps of the uh under armor uh, camp i so think i'm gonna try to get with mick and do a um a bcj recruiting podcast at some point this week so he can give us the details on what he saw uh, right. and he also talked to those guys there so there will be stories coming uh from the four commits that were there uh and the prospects that were there so we will uh we'll get with mick on that uh, either in an independent uh, BCJ recruiting podcast uh, or with uh, maybe on Thursday night, maybe try to work him in with Dave. We, we will have a lot Thursday night because Thursday is pro day. Uh, I will be there. Uh, Dave is going to try to be there, but I don't think, I think it's, he's got something at work that's going to unfortunately possibly prevent him from attending, but uh, we'll have plenty of pro day talk on Thursday. I meant to ask Marquise about the, the pro day experience just to get a different perspective on it, but right, uh, I, we kept him for an hour and 10 minutes. So yeah, he was great. I yeah. always feel bad about like, I want to tell them, Aaron, when we asked them, this happened with John Cunningham yeah, last week. Yeah, like when we, when we say, no, when we say, like we ask, that one, the, the, the first thing we ask when a, a new guest or, or a, an important guest, how much time you got for us? Aaron yeah. with, with Marquise, how much time you got for us? If it's 20 minutes, no problem. 
If it's 30 minutes, no problem. If they say, I'm good, like however much, like we'll, we'll talk for however much time you need. That's how you end up in a year by year breakdown of your entire <laughs> collegiate career, <laughs> right? Like, I mean, we're, no, but we're I, gonna I think ask he's questions. Doing it, though. No, he did. It, no, 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 no. That's I'm not, not a not. That's a bad thing. No. no, right. I'm just saying, if you tell us you you have right. free time, we are going to take up as much of that free time as humanly possible. That's just how we do it here. Well, and, and another thing is, I I think you could probably tell if the guest is starting to be like, all right, here's another. question. Yeah, sure. Coming. But that hasn't he happened. He looked like he genuinely yeah. enjoyed like reliving the Bearcat days. Oh, yeah, for sure. A lot of these guys, like a lot of these pro guys, they're so far removed from it that they love getting getting whatever chance they can to like just talk about the old days. Oh, they love it. Yeah. Especially because, you know, it's a it's a way for them to kind of still keep like competition within their team. Because I right. it, out, out the bars, I'd see, you know, like Sam Young from Pittsburgh and he I'd bump into him and, you know, be heavily intoxicated and be like, hey, did you watch the Cincy Pitt game the other day? He said, yeah, Lance and I had a big bet going on, blah, 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 <laughs> things like that. So, yeah, I, I mean, they love chopping it up, especially Marquise on, on another pod I listened to said every single week he just hounds his teammates about how well the Bearcats are doing. <laughs> I mean, it's big time. Um, he was great. He was but great. But basketball, we got to roll into it. Another, another name hit the portal today. Mikey Sodders Jr. Um, I mean, this was I, it kind of seemed like from my just like from my point of view, one of the kind of a, a surprising one, if you will. I didn't think that he would have been the the second player to hit the portal. Well, not named Rob Banks, but I I don't know. It just seemed as if it took me by surprise. But I you would you would be in the, more in the well known than I am on this one, Chad. He was one of the names I had in the decision to be made column. Grouping, yeah. As I've said, the sense I get or I got from the end of season to now was that the starting point guard for next year was not on the roster. Right. That that they would be in the market looking for a starting caliber point guard. Mm-hmm. And when you sit down and have those conversations, if that's how the conversation went, and and from my understanding, you've had Mason Madsen and you've had Mike Saunders both enter the portal. Mm -hmm. My understanding is the conversations were very open, very honest. There were no hard feelings. There were no, uh, there was no ill will. It was not like, I hate this situation and I'm out of here. It was, here's here's the real situation. We're going to bring in a point guard. Yeah. And if you're okay with that, cool. Yep. If not, you know, then it's best for you. If you have bigger aspirations and, and, and you want to achieve bigger things, that's okay. Like, that's that's how this process works now. With the portal, you don't have to sit out a year, like right. go in the portal, find you a, a, a spot where you're comfortable, um, where you have a, a system that looks to maximize your potential. That's OK. Like with Mason Madsen, we're bringing in Daniel Skillings and Josh Reed, even before the portal. Yep. There are going to be minutes at the two and three. How whatever way those guys are used, like let's say hypothetically, like people will say, well, you, Chad, you say Josh Reed's going to be used at the four. Okay, but if Josh Reed's used at the four, that bumps somebody to the three, right? Right. And if Skillings is going to be used at the two, and and hypothetically David DeJulius stays, now you have. Skillings into Julius at the two, and you have potentially like Newman and Hensley at the three, and your path is going to be third, most likely, in, in those situations. And if you want more than that, that's okay. Like, the, that's that's college basketball now. You now have the ability 
to go out and find that situation that you feel is a better fit for you. So to my knowledge, both of these situations with, with both players that entered the portal um, were amicable. Both of those players spoke highly of Wes, spoke highly yep. of the program. There was no ill will on the way out the door. Nope. And and both of those guys are going to go look for a situation that, that is a better fit for them. Um, I hate to see both of them go. I liked both kids. I got along well with both kids. Uh, hell, I'm, I'm essentially kind of part of the Saunders family for as long as I've been working with them right. uh, from his recruitment through his time here at Cincinnati. Like, I, I love Mike's dad. I love Mike's mom. I, I, I would get in – this is be, we'll pull back the curtain. I would get in entire AAU tournament long arguments with Mike's younger brother about whether or not MJ or LeBron was the greatest basketball player ever. And every time I would see him, we would go at it and we would be standing on the baseline and people would think we were like ready to fight. Because we were just having fun and cutting it up, and you know how yeah. those arguments get. Man, you shut up, man! You get out of here, like it, yeah. And people will be like, "Well, what's going on over there?" And it's like, "No, we're it's, <laughs> we're good." So, like, I love the Saunders family. Like, they mm -hmm. they become became a part of my life. Uh, yeah. Just especially with Mike's dad being an AAU coach, and and seeing his team so much, and seeing his family so much, and getting to know his mom and his dad and his little brother and. I had a great relationship with Mike. I had a great relationship with Mason. I hate to see those two guys go. Um, but conversations time, were had. Every time I was with you, I was just to add to that. I, those were the first two guys I feel like you were always dapping up. I mean, those were those were your guys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But they're they're going, hopefully, to what are situations that are better suited for their dreams and aspirations as a college basketball player. Because yeah. that's what this comes down to, right? Like, I, I've tried to express this to people and I don't, I don't, it, I know fans are, fans get to be emotionally disconnected from this because they don't know the kids, right? right? So all they know is like, I'm tired of watching this kid. Get this kid off my fucking screen. Like, and. Did I catch a rabble rouser in there? Right? <laughs> like, th I get like, but I understand that, right? Like, it, your investment, your emotional investment is um, directly tied to the success of the team. And you want what's, what you feel and think is best for the team. But there are humans on the other end of these decisions. And for me, as long as it's handled amicably, as long as it's handled right, and the coach is honest with the player, and the player gets to make a decision on what they feel is best for them, then the the goal of like college athletics is still being accomplished because there's still the possibility that you know you go to a player and you say this is what we think and you played 22 minutes a game last year and next year you're probably going to play 14 and the player goes I'm good with that okay then you're in like it, it, we discussed it. We've had the tough conversation. It's, you know, we've had the difficult exchange and you're going to have probably a different role next year than you had this year. And it might not be what you like. And if you want more, go get more. If you want to be a part of this program and taking us to the next level and you're okay with a reduced role, then let's roll. Like that, that's how these conversations work. Right. So uh, my question then is obviously the first time that Bearcat fans truly experienced this was last off season in completely different circumstances, but that was adversarial. That was right, angry. Right. Exactly. But that was disconnect. But what you also noticed through that was the fact that you can enter your name into the portal, see what's out there, make a final decision. And as you mentioned, if that final decision is a, player coming to the senses and saying, hey, you know what? No. Maybe, maybe I am willing to take this, this competition and, sure. and whatever role comes from it. But there's right. a difference. Oh, oh, big big time. Yes. Once there's, you enter your that. name into the portal, there's no guarantee that you're accepted back. 
Right. Once exactly. you're once you enter name when enter your name into the portal, you're no longer a part of the team. Your your scholarship is essentially void at the end of that academic semester or quarter right. or whatever you're in. Right. Um, the coach can take you back. Yep. If he so desires. Uh, but the the minute you go to compliance and you enter your name into that portal, you have uh filed your divorce papers <laughs> if you will right uh you can you can go you can reconcile and you know right. if both sides annul those or, or, or decide that they don't want a divorce uh right. yes but that has to be a decision made by both sides right and and so something else that you see what you you guys have taken in pretty much all of the of the NCAA tournament at this point What's what's one thing you you really notice on a lot of these teams, especially the teams that are in the Sweet Sixteen? It's the fact that it's a mix. There's of, a lot of transfers. Yeah, yeah, it's a mix of continuity and a mix of transfers. I was just going to say offense, terrible officiating, defense. Yes, true. Uh, and and another thing I I really recognize is length. So length. That's what we've talked about all year. Right. Right. And so this team didn't have the length and athleticism when you watch. A lot of these teams, man, like it's not just that there are guys six five; it's there are guys six five with a six ten wingspan, or you know, or even six three with a with a six right eight six ten wingspan. So right, like length is something this team is is lacking. It's a because of the way that the floor is spaced. Length is critical now. So that you can close the space on the floor. If if you're a six foot guard with a six three wingspan, and you're trying to close out twelve feet right. on a kickout pass to a shooter, that shooter is going to shoot right over you, over you. every time. Or if Period. you're trying to drive into the lane and finish at the rim, or if you're right. trying to get a shot over one of those players with length closing out on you, right? It's a it's it's something that's blatantly obvious with the 16 teams that are still in it. And as what we talked about when what was the one thing West prioritized when recruiting? Right. Length on the way. Six yeah. six, six six skillings with a seven foot wingspan, six seven reed with a seven foot one wingspan. He knows that is critical. I expect that to again be critical as we see Cincinnati dive into the portal uh and that process yeah and, and so so you look at the current 16 teams still in the ncaa tournament only two teams and surprisingly there were the only two teams in all of power five to not take in a transfer this year villanova and purdue so that's a culture within itself but every single other team the other 14 teams have at least one transfer from this past year so, some up to five or six that are constantly in their rotation. So it's a, it's, it's, this is the moment where a quick fix is available. It truly is. And if you hit, you hit a couple home runs, you skillings and, and Reed perform up to their potential. You get, you get an important piece. Vic, Vic said he's returning. If he makes a big jump down low with the post, you know, potentially as, as whatever. Doesn't even need to make a big jump. Right. Make exactly. a, make a right. modest jump. Right. 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 Yeah. Give us, give us 15, Great minutes. Give us twenty great minutes from from game to game, and yeah, and that's and and let's say I don't expect Josh Reed and Daniel Skillings to come in and be all world guys. Oh, but no. let's say let's say they come in and they provide a combined twelve points and six rebounds. Modest for two a pair of freshmen, right? Like yep. a combined total, 12.6 rebounds from the two of them. Your bench is drastically different. Right. Yeah. With 12 yep. points and six rebounds from the two of them. Like it's not. So here's the thing. This is the way I'm seeing it right now. I think there are, there are two spots open. I, I get the sense one way, somehow or another, there will be one more. So you will have three spots to fill with transfers. I think you need to hit on a starting point guard and a starting center. Yeah. I think you need to hit on best 
like you know, like uh, like the Bengals in the draft. You got to hit on best player available <laughs> that you can get with that third spot. Right. <clears throat> then you get and Reed and Skillings. Now you got five. Yep. Five guys that can contribute and change the everyday construction of this roster. Right. That's a lot of dudes. In, in general, right, we talk about, and Wes, it seems to be a little bit larger, but in general, nine-man rotation is about as deep as teams go. Oh, look at North Carolina. They they, have, they go six deep. I, I mean, it's barely even 60. It's Teams that want to play their bench play nine, right? Right. If they exactly. get five guys, even if three of them are bench parts, Let's say they get, the, you know, let's say that hypothetically they get a starting point guard, a starting big. That third guy is a five point a game bench guy. Right. And you get the 12 we just mentioned from Reed and Skillings. Now you're at 17 bench points tonight. That's Along all without with your starting lineup. Well, that's all without taking into consideration if Newman takes a leap, if Hensley builds or, off at the end of the season. Or you go get somebody that makes Jeremiah Davenport your sixth man. Now Jeremiah Davenport is added to your bench scoring. You bring him in, he'll spark for six threes in one night. But okay. you get a starting point guard, Micah is added to your bench scoring. Yeah. Like it, 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 there's so much you can do with just two or three spots that I, I, I think people are like, not they, well they want to look at like okay well this is what this team did well well that team had nine guys leave right they didn't have it's a, this team if there's three spots you get three freshmen three transfers that's six spots open that's mm -hmm. still half of your 13 person roster yeah i went so, to public school in kentucky six into 13, that's half, I think. Six into a it, baker's dozen. Aaron was the that's math half. major. Aaron, is yeah. that? Yeah. Aaron, that checks out, right? Close enough. Very okay. close. Uh, so, Aaron, <laughs> Aaron I, is this is somewhat this of a factor to consider as well? Is that Wes, Wes was a point guard? And, and I've seen these, these thoughts being rolled around. Wes was a point guard. And if you look at his teams, his great teams, while at UNCG, he had a great point guard. He has not had the ability to go out and, and, and get a point guard that fits the mold that he wants. He's kind of had to, you know, obviously been here one season, so had had to figure out to do with what he had. Is this the first offseason where you see his ability to now go out and find a point guard that fits what he wants to do on both sides of the ball? And that is a factor that also gets added in on top of it. How the hell could that not be have been a frustration of his this season when right. – you know, to your all of your points. I mean, he he was a point guard. He why wouldn't he want to see that position, especially right. take off? So yeah, I absolutely think that. And I mean, I I'd be shocked looking at how he's putting together length. I'd be shocked if the point guard that he brings in doesn't also have length. Because yeah. if not, then I mean, maybe you do try and and. You know, well, hypothetically, if DeJulia stays, you have to get longer and more athletic at point guard. You have to. Right. Yeah. Have to. I don't yes. like, well, we await Dave's decision, like word on what Dave's going to do. Like I said last week, I, I feel from the conversations I have that it's trending in a positive direction for Cincinnati. But minds change, like uh, situations change. Who knows? If Dave comes back and he's your starting two, you have to be longer at the one. You have to. Right. I, but also in the same sense. So, so yes, length. But, I mean, look at Isaiah Miller, who you could argue is, was the best player that he had at UNCG. Long, athletic, explosive. Right. I don't exactly. think it's an argument. But, but he was six foot. Right, he was six foot. So, I'm just saying, like, it, it's not like it, the answer has to be a six West foot Coast five. Shit. Right, it doesn't have to be like. A <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it! I didn't. I didn't know if you were going to stop or keep going. You went. You, you, you. 
I, you finished, you know, you I got to the point. I got to the point to make sure everybody knew what I was talking about. <laughs> no, Brent, I get you. Yeah. It, it, there's not like there's not a, a cookie cutter. He has to be this and he has to be that. But Isaiah Miller was six foot with long arms and he will dunk on your fucking which is yeah, what I was saying. Doing that's, this. Just, that's just the comment <laughs> I was making. But no, yeah, no, I agree. Um, but yeah, so who knows? There's there's a lot of a lot of different things here. What's what's Jim? What's you are the solo there. there. Damon Flint was horribly miscast as a point guard. My goodness, he would have been a hell of a small forward. Like but they didn't. Jay, they James didn't White have an option. Point guard that one. Yeah, year. like Armin Kirkland playing point guard, like. Nick Williams was playing point guard. And, and and look, I love Damon Flint, but he did not reach his ceiling being forced to play point guard because the team didn't have a point guard. Go get – basketball has become point guard, wing, stretch, big man. Of course, so, he, yeah, he was 6'5", but, like, he wasn't – he wasn't a point guard. He was he was a small forward that was forced to play point guard because the maybe, roster demanded it. Maybe he's just saying he just wants that length. No, 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 no. The yeah. difference – well, and here's the other thing back then, Jim. 6'5 guys weren't ever – like, if you were 6'5, you were never developed into playing a point guard. Now, if you look at the NBA, if you're a point guard and you're under 6'3, you are rare. Your name's Chris Paul. Uh, yeah, like point guards now are minimum NBA point guard is six four. Well, even Jordan would have been out of size at six six, six five, six six. He would have been a two. The, well, I mean, he still would have, he was a two, but he, he was that, more a, a three in that NBA. Technically, like if you go back and look, like well, Scotty was most, Scotty was the three was largely. Yeah, they use Scotty in a lot of different ways. Robin, they use Michael Luke in a lot Long of different ways. ways. It would be nice to have two wings that were the two of the top 50 wings in the history so we could argue which one played the two and which one played the three. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but, yeah, like I agree with you, Jim. The, the, the length is what you're looking for. Uh, you're just – you're getting to a point now where, God, man, point guards, if you go look at – go look at, like, the, the recruiting rankings, point guards are 6'3 and up now. So uh – Quickly, while we were at this wrap up the basketball side, two part question. Um, first off, you look at the calendar, not really calendar, the the timetable now of of scholarships and and when years are up and, and things like that. If if the two thousand twenty three start to the Big Twelve is is what's out there on the table, then you now have with Mikey moving on, you now have a, a and depending on who is this replacement at point guard. You could have a lot of minutes available at the one position. And you look at, obviously, the top targets that the Bearcats are going after. Isaiah Collier, obviously, Green, just they, two of them. It's that point guard position. So something to, to also keep in the back of your mind. Secondly, would you say within the next couple of days or by the end of the week, are, are, are you getting a pulse on – it's going to continue this way, or our talks just going to go on, and this could be something that takes a longer than than what it is, and uh, for everything to wrap up, and then now you see the new beginnings. Just a little patience, yeah. Relax, oh, I'm, just everybody. I'm chill. No, I know you're chill. <laughs> I'm just the people on the boards are not chill. People are yeah. like, I want all of this news today. Right. So, would you say that the Bengals with the Lyle Collins thing, or Cincinnati fans with the transfer portal, is more like I want it now? Well, the Bengals got what they wanted with Lyle Collins, but, but I feel like all all weekend. I mean, the fact that people were reporting. Well, here's the difference. Here's the difference. At the mall. Lyle Collins was in town. He was here yeah. Yeah. when there's a transfer on campus taking his official visit to see if he's going to commit to Cincinnati, then we can follow him around town and see if he's at Kenwood mall or whatever the place may be. <laughs> like we're not there yet. Like there's look, so this will, this will put what I need to say in perspective. 
there are roughly 500 names in the transfer portal right now. Last year, that number was like over 12, 1300 names, right? So we're not even at the halfway point of what's going to happen in the transfer portal. We just saw 32 teams eliminated from the NCAA tournament. Conversations are happening across all those 32 teams as to who's staying, who's going, or no, more than that, 32, 16, 48. 48 teams were eliminated from the NCAA tournament. You like that, Aaron? That was fast math. Plus the four from... I was going to say it's incorrect because you also... Well, no, the, plus the two. two. Well, there's two, only... Two well, more. No, mm-hmm. two each day. There's four that were eliminated there. One each So, day. 52. It was, it was only... 52 50. teams. Yeah, there's there's 68 teams that make the tournament. We're down to 16. 16. So, 52 teams have been eliminated. Those teams are all just now making their... What about the NIT conversations? What about yeah, the NIT? And, NIT and all the other yeah. ones as well. Yeah. CBI. Also a factor. Right. So there's a shit ton of names that are mm-hmm. not in the portal yet. Yep. Over the next two to three weeks, those names will be in the portal. And Cincinnati will be in a position to move. And you add in coaching carousel on top of that. You add in just a multitude of things. So, yeah. It's gonna ha- like it's gonna ha- it has to happen, right? It has yeah. to happen. Cincinnati now has two spots open. I believe they will have a third. You never know if there will be more. That's just how college basketball works, right? At least two, probably three. And now the staff has a target of this is what we have. This is what we're looking for. This right. is what we need to keep our eye out for. And, you know, as, as someone described to me tonight, I said, what position do you think Cincinnati is in as all this plays out? And I said, if you're playing spades, I'd say they got seven books and a couple possibles. Let's, let's see how, the, yeah, you might call it, like you might call seven books and a couple possibles and get four. You, you might get, you know, you might lose a lot of points. <laughs> let's let space. the cards fall as they may, baby. But let's let the cards fall where we may. We got to see how the hand plays out. Right. I agree. I agree. So uh, any, uh, anything else wrapping up on this? I know obviously it's a, there's, it's happening. Things are happening. So just sit back, I guess, let it happen. Uh, Mr. Mr. Wynn, no, the the one was banks. The banks dropped. There was three freshmen coming in, so he's right. part of that with the two seniors that moved on. Then the Madsen and Saunders make it two available. Yeah, get your ass out of here, T. <laughs> uh, uh, Nobody pays you to think, T. Wynn. <laughs> Boomer. <laughs> What a boomer. So sick of that guy. Uh, well, I think it's that time if, uh, if we have nothing else here. Uh, we, Chad, do have, we do have something else. We have a timestamp, so I hope Chad's ready for the read before he gets up from his desk. Oh, come on, man. But, Chad, sitting, quick, quick I've question. At this, I've been anchored to this desk for an hour and 43 minutes. Timestamp brought to you by Urban Artifacts or Tap Rooms located, located in Northside, 1660 Blue Rock Street. Open on Wednesday through Sunday with the pizza kitchen on site. You know what we need to do? We need to do a staff like Sunday. Let's all meet up at Urban Artifacts, have some pizza, have some beer. I'll pick up. I'll pick up the tab. Work Sunday Urban after Artifacts, the spring game. So maybe you know. We'll, I mean, we'll Saturday the after the spring game. Um. I, it can't be that because that is actually the opening weekend of AAU. Oh, Brent, I'm going to need you. Where are they playing? Uh, Under Armour and Adidas are both in Indy. I can't go to the spring game. No, I mean on on Friday and Sunday. <laughs> I'm going to need you Friday and Sunday so we can. Mick's going to like we're all three. Me, you, and Mick are going to have to maximize getting eyes on stuff Friday and Sunday because we're going to have right. to be at the spring game on Saturday. Right. But anyhow, 
some Sunday here this spring or Saturday, depending like if it's after the spring game, maybe the weekend after the spring game, we organize, let's all have a BCJ meet up uh, at Urban Artifact. Maybe we can do a live podcast like on their Wi-Fi. Uh, you know, everybody bring their laptop and we'll have some fun with it. And whatever. I'd love to see. I'd love to see you guys in action. Love to see it. But, you know. Have some sours. I, I'm not a big so to this point. I'm not a big like fruit beer guy because I've, I like it's not something I just I'm I'm pretty. Like, their I'm key, a basic bitch. Their key lime goes is phenomenal. When I've heard when a bunch say, of good things when you about say their sours. sours. Like are, like is this like a shandy? Yeah, we'll, we'll get you hip. Don't worry. It's like a sour. It's like a sour fruit. Like it's like fruit, sour fruit beer. We'll get you hip to it. Like I said. <laughs> We're gonna, you're gonna send me your address. I'm gonna, they're gonna take care of you. They're gonna get you some samples. Can't and you're gonna wait. get hit to sour beer. I, I, I need to get hit to sour beer because it's just something I haven't drank a lot of. Yeah. My yeah. impression of sour beer is IPAs. Oh, they're not like I, IPAs, right, Aaron? No, 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 no. no. I, I don't like IPAs because, it, like, I just don't like. It's so hot. Like, like a yeah, Ryan guy's bubbles. Hoppy. Like, I'm not saying I'm not saying IPA. I like IPAs, but but yeah, I don't I mean. It's definitely not a hoppy. It's sometimes it's a sweet, sometimes it's a sour. Like sometimes it's more sweet, sometimes it's more sour. But it's never like sweet like a seltzer or anything like that. But right, I digress. At, at first they're sour, then they're sweet. No, it's not that either. Get out of here. <laughs> All, All right. right, let's do my bag. Let's get All right. So the first question we did already ask when Cope was here, um, along with the second. Um, did you guys want to touch on the uh, dream ideal away non-conference matchup? I mean, we can talk about it. Because um, for me, it, I, the reason I brought it up, it, it is the keg of nails. I think that that game is probably more than any game that I can think of. Um, For me, I, Notre Dame was up there, so that was awesome. Yeah, I think Notre Dame is the right answer, and that was mission accomplished, right? In my alma mater, IU, that was another one that was up there. So that was awesome. Yeah. Uh, I used, two, I used two birds with one stone. I used got a football history similar to like, you know. Oh no, Xavier Believe basketball. Me. For me, it was just like, like oh, like, <laughs> like driving on the way there and then I getting know, there just and then just all that reminiscing. Not really their football program, man. Oof. I, I, I rarely went to games as a student, but if I had to pick one, um. I'd love to like go to like. I mean, I guess we're doing Fayetteville this year, but just kind of just another SEC school. I'd love just, to get Death Valley at night, LSU, especially right, like, with BK there now. But you yeah, know what? There's no fucking chance BK is inviting Cincinnati to play right. LSU at Death Valley. He's yeah, he's never going to give Cincinnati <laughs> the opportunity to play LSU. <laughs> New- New phone, who did? <laughs> <laughs> I heard ga- games at Texas A&M are wild. Uh, yeah. I mean, I'd love to go to what? Pretty much, I I don't know. I Just just any of the big name schools. Yeah, I was going to say, I wouldn't mind the in. Swamp. Swamp, but, swamp but I heard, heard the Swamp gets pretty doggone swampy. Georgia so. would be fun to, between the Hedges and Athens. Yep, yep. Uh, Ole Miss. Great, especially great, after uh, after the Peach Bowl. Like, I think a Georgia Cincinnati rematch in in Athens would be fun. Yeah, would be. Ole Miss is a oh, greatest greatest place to have a little party as well. Yeah, so. but that game itself, like, man, it's all, like with Lane there, I guess it's got some juice. If Lane's there like, for a while, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I don't know that. Like, I it would be one that you would like highlight in like glitter. I guess. I guess here's here's a question for you guys. Out of the two teams that are leaving the Big Twelve, there's there's it's looking like there's that one year holdover. Which team would you rather have the road trip to? Let's head into the SEC the following year. Texas, because there's a better chance to win. <laughs> right. Okay. And then when you okay. do, I want to see the UC players horn down. <laughs> oh, right. they get so mad. <laughs> yeah, don't don't they like find people or what? They no, they flag people, right? If they do I, it. No, they like the, the 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 even the Big Twelve has come out and been like you cannot horns down. It's like <laughs> when you say like Xavier hired a cheater. Like this, those fans get mad. I don't know. Once <laughs> once the game's over, I think you can you can do whatever you want. What are you, what are you going to do at that point? 
Get out. The of proof here. is yeah. the proof is in the book with that one, right? Yeah, All you right. know. Next question: uh, What's the current status of Ron Crook? Uh, I don't believe he is employed at UC any longer. Um, I know he, he was under contract. I don't have an answer to how that was resolved. I know I, I have been to spring practice, every spring practice. I'll be there tomorrow. I have not seen Ron. There's not been an official release. I, I don't know if it's like one of those, like, you're a consultant. Like, it, we're paying you, but, like, you don't have to be around. I don't know. Like, I, I haven't ever gotten a final answer on that. I have spoken. Let me say this. There is no one outside of like my family that has been more ardent in checking in on Kelly and making sure we're okay than Ron Crook. Um, I know he's spoken at a couple events. I know from talking to him, he is enjoying greatly getting a little bit of a refresh to be a dad and to spend time with his family. Um, I don't know where that's at because I feel it would be very tacky to like try to like talk business talk business when he is like i heard that your wife didn't the clinical trial didn't work we're thinking about you uh, and me to be like oh really okay great that's great uh what's your what's your employment status if you see yeah i'm not gonna do that like i'm just not ron has become a friend i value him dearly uh i'm not gonna put him in that awkward situation to answer that question uh, I know some of you probably feel like I should, uh, but that's just that's just me. Like, there's there's ways to get that information without doing that. So when when the time comes, I feel like you'll pull the trigger there. Not, yeah. not I have him, not seen but... him at a spring practice. I have not seen him around to date. That's not to say that there won't like there's not a connection still. I know he still has a great respect and care for Luke Fickle. I know Luke feels the same about Ron. Uh, you see, just went in a different direction on the offensive line. I don't know specifically where that relationship is at the moment. Chad, you just completely glanced over my my book comment. I thought that was pretty good. It was, but I was in the middle of a very serious answer. Oh, no, no, no. But I said it before <laughs> this, but no. Well, I was heading in that direction. Right. I got you. Fair. Okay. We're good. All right. We're good. It was clever. How likely is it that UC will ever play Memphis once they leave for the Big 12? I think I'll miss that rivalry if it totally dies with us leaving the AAC. Is that basketball? I'm sure there's a chance. Like, I'm sure there's a chance in either sport. It was a football question. A football question? Mm -hmm. um, I think the problem you get into, Cincinnati has made it pretty clear if the Big 12 is, stays at nine, they want one – power power five like big name opponent right one mac level school which as we know for the foreseeable future is miami got that got that set every year and then one fcs level school memphis as it stands does not fit into that particular like conversation now let's say hypothetically memphis becomes the team in the american right yeah. They and they're really competing good, yeah. for New Year's Six Bowls. And, like, you know, the, they're at the top of the food chain in the American every year. I could see something like that getting worked out. Basketball, yeah, if Larry Brown sticks around, like, Wes and Larry, as we have talked about, are very close. From Larry's ties to Roy in North Carolina. And so, like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't rule out Memphis in basketball – given the current state of things. Right. Um, but who knows, man, we're in for so much change. Like there's so much unknown going into this on how UC is really going to posture and like position themselves. Like it's a, it, it's not easy to predict and like answer questions like this because we have no clue. Right. All right. Uh, the UC alumni group is growing in the NFL annually. Can you guys shed any insight on how UC approaches getting the players to give back to the university financially? Are the current players donating to the facilities? Guys like Travis and Jason Kelsey, Wolf, Copeland, Hudson, etc. Do they give back? 
I, I don't know that as a specific answer. I that that is kind of one of those things that like I I think if there was something significant that had happened, it would be public, right? That's not to say that they're not donating at a smaller level or whatever, but if there was like, you know, a, a million dollar donation, like oh, yeah. somebody's name would be on something, it would be like, right. it would be something that you see champions. Uh-huh. Um, I think this is all part of why Fickle has had great outreach with these guys. And I think a lot of times what you see is those relationships happen after the fact, like after a guy's career is over, right? Um, Makes sense. I mean, you don't know I, what tomorrow brings, so yeah. Right. Totally I, I just think like if there was something big that would have happened, we would know, right? <clears throat> maybe we need to get, you know, maybe that's a that's probably more of a BCJ podcast guest to get somebody from UCATS or somebody from that world to kind of explain like how that works, what happens, how it, how it goes down, uh, where those things are at. Cause I mean, like the, the hard thing, like right now, if you look at the NFL outside of like Barwin, who's retired, who got a couple contracts and the Kelsey brothers, a lot of this is still in its infancy, right? Right. Tony, Tony like, was in the league a couple of years. No, not really. Tony never got to a second contract. Long enough to get a, a nickname from Steve Smith. Yes, he did get that. <laughs> but Tony was a six-round pick that never made it. Like, th- like the second and third contract guys are the guys that are going to be like, yeah in a position to to make a significant donation and uc's really not there yet but i think now as you're starting to see well it's a numbers game too right the more guys you put in the nfl the more guys that are going to be getting to that second and third nfl contract and then when you get to that like you know the guys that are hey so and so just signed a $56 $56 million guaranteed deal. Right. Then that guy <laughs> is a guy you're going to be like, Hey, what's up? <laughs> yeah. And you know what? I agree with Cope completely with what he said is that like right now, the perception is finally starting to change where, yes. I, I mean, like he said, I, th- that team like Cope and, and Cortez should have been drafted. And if they were on this team this year, they would oh, be four no fifth doubt. round picks for sure. Yeah. No doubt. So, so perception is going to change. It's going to put more bodies in the NFL, and like you said, more chances for the higher contracts and whatnot. Yeah, Jeff said uh, he thinks that uh, those guys take care of their high schools first if they're going to go do things while they're active, like Kyle Rudolph for Elder. So yeah, because doing something at the high school level, like you can donate like two hundred thousand dollars at the high school level, and it makes a huge difference, right? Right. Two hundred thousand dollars at the end of, or at, the, at the, the high major college level, like like we're talking the, the indoor facility. We're talking like that's a seventy million dollar project, right? That's a lot, right? Yep. Tiger uh, agrees. That's a lot. All right. Um, how long have you been covering UC football as a profession and did you ever envision the program would be where it is currently with further potential growth on the horizon in terms of recruiting facilities, conference affiliation and coaching stability? So I started at Bearcat layer in 2006. Uh, For the first 10 years, I was mostly basketball, but there was still quite a bit of football coverage involved in my job responsibilities. It just wasn't like the primary thing I was doing. Uh, when Tim Adams retired in 2016, then I took over football, like I took over football and added that to basketball. Um, so I, I've had a hand in football coverage since 2006, but it wasn't like a a primary thing until 2016. Um, 
Did I ever envision the program would be where it is currently? Sure. Sure. They made two BCS bowls. 2008 and 2009, right? Like, and at that point in time, we didn't know that everything was about to collapse around them, right? So at that point in time, the Big East had a, a clear path to the BCS. If you had a clear path to the BCS, like you had a clear path to at least being in the mix like UC was in 2009 for a national championship. Um, then we had to readjust when that fell apart and they were relegated to the, the to the AAC. Um, where it is currently, I mean, no. Or especially if you consider once the reshuffling happened, there was definitely a belief that like, oh boy, we might be stuck here a long time, right? Right. Um, but... They figured it out. They made the right hire. <laughs> there's there's no more impactful hire in in the history of Cincinnati athletics than Luke Fickle. Now, I appreciate your answer, but I don't know that that question was aimed at you. What if it was aimed at Brent? Okay, Brent, answer it. <laughs> um, I, what, I've been covering UC football for what? This is year three, I guess. Yeah, three and a half. It's it's Roughly. been a, a decent amount. Yeah, but I've been a fan my whole life. So uh, did I ever think they'd reach this? Well, we tasted it a little bit earlier under Brian Kelly. Um, so I knew I knew the possibility was there, but to the level of this, I probably not because I always I'm I'm guy that always saw Cincy as basketball first, and. You know, I just never thought that all this effort into making building the football program to what it is would would be put in, and so now it's uh, it's both. It's a monster. They're building it. So, yes and no. All right. Um, what moving on to basketball? What are the top five UC teams that missed the Sweet Sixteen? I don't know that we necessarily need to go top five, but maybe top three. I think we talked about some of those 2000. teams last year. Kenyon's team. <laughs> 2000. Yeah. Um, and then that that team with, with Lenny and, and Logan that lost to UCLA round two. They were a one seed. The national uh, nightmare. Yeah. Don't, yeah. Ugh, gosh. Uh, that was a final four team. That was a final four team. Oh, easily. Um, and, and, and gosh. Ugh, I, all right. Let's move on. I don't even want to think about it. Uh, the, uh, Why do you guys ask us? Like, what, what? come on, man! Just wallowing in misery. S SK senior year, I guess. Um, the, that team, like the reality, that team was limping to the finish. They were, they were, but but still, you're a five seed. You play hard. Yeah, but they were round. so beat up, and like uh, they yeah. didn't, they didn't. There was no like they didn't have a lot of answers on that team, right? right. So I, once they started faltering, it was. It was bad. Right. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm sure there's some other ones that were a little Probably. bit further back. Uh, we got, we got like, well, that was like four. I think four is close. That's enough. Don't want to think about it. Uh, how much do you think Wes allows every kid to make a decision versus directing some conversations to meet what he needs? I think we all know the difference in tone with the conversation. I think you can versus I doubt you can. And Doc I think Wes, I, uh, Doc, we have been we have talked about this for months, and he is honest with the kid. This is what we see. This is where we think you are. Are 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 do our goals for you? Do our thoughts of you align with what your vision is? And if they are, we can continue to move <laughs> forward. And if they aren't, then we need to come up with an alternate plan. So that you can get where you want to go and we can get where we want to go. Okay. It, 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 here's the problem I have with, with this stuff. It's the same stuff every week in a different way to try to get me to say something new. Right? Like th that's that that's the point of like you ask the same question and like you reword it to think, oh, I, I'll get him this way. The conversations he has, and we talked about this earlier. We heard from both Mason and Mikey on their personal accounts that they had great conversations with Wes. They had great respect for the program. 
they felt that where they wanted to be wasn't maybe in line with with where things were headed for them and they made a decision if he there are coaches that tell you you got to go clearly we talked about that with Chris Mack for a long time Chris Mack openly every year like if there was a freshman that didn't meet the criteria they met with coach at the end of the season and they were gone. I don't think that's how, like the read I've gotten is that's not how Wes operates. This is our vision for you. What is your vision for you? Do those things align? And if not, then we probably should find a different solution. Honesty is important, not only for the kid that is sitting in front of you, but for every kid on the roster, what did we learn with Cope when we talked to him earlier today? Everybody was close, right? Yeah. And if you lie to a kid, everybody's going to know it. Everybody's going to know it because mm-hmm. the kid's going to go back and talk to his friends. That's what unraveled last year more than anything. Right. Is that kids were being told one thing. Everybody else was being told something different. And when the kids started talking, the truth started to come out. This kid was told this. This kid was told that. Those two things didn't match up. Match up. That's how you lose everyone. How you keep everybody in the same plane, in the same wavelength, in the same thought is be honest. And you find a mutual place that determines whether the future is here or the future is somewhere else. All right. Danny Fortson's last year as a Bearcat, another one. Lost yeah. Iowa State. <laughs> Second round. Uh, 2v2 former Bearcats. I guess kind of like NBA jam rules. Uh, Prime Kenyon Martin and Oscar Robertson versus any combination of the field. Who would you take? The two best players in UC basketball history ever. Wait, ever. wait, 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 wait. No, 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 no. It's, no. He, he's, he, he said, he said, prime Kenyon Martin, space, and space Oscar Robertson. So he's meaning Oscar in his current state. Prime <laughs> <Kenyon Martin. laughs> I'd still take Kenyon and Oscar. I think I'd got to play the two. I don't know. <laughs> I'd still take Kenyon and Oscar. Look, man. Oscar was a walking triple double, and Prime Kenyon was the I, baddest dude on the planet. I mean, I think you could put them up against the the best two from any ever college. Yeah, but if you had to pick two, would you go Prime Demar? Would you go Prime Nick Van Exel? Would you go Danny Fortson? And again, I guess, and, and because it's 2v2, and I, I threw in the NBA Jam thing just because it is 2v2, yeah. um, but if you're playing NBA Jam rules, anything goes. You don't actually have to have true matchups to where you don't have to have a Danny Fortson, but I guess if you're playing... Well, and, my, and Jason, Jason K, Ken Dog is right here. I'd pay to see Prime Danny versus Prime Kenya well, be because... Fun. That'd be a lot of fun. Danny could bury you, man, and just put you in a position where you could not block his shot. Right. So then the question becomes, who gets Oscar? <laughs> <laughs> right? Well, so, I, think, I think you'd have to go with the length of DeMar. Yeah, but, I mean, DeMar was a one-year, like, I don't know. I don't know. Like, I, I get where you're coming from, for sure. DeMar was drafted off of his crazy potential. Yes. and And he sadly never got to reach it. Well, he was on the way to reach it, and then he right. broke his neck. Like, right, it, it, exactly. Well, yeah. Um, I mean, I think you got to hurt him with shooting. If I, but even Kenyon can can defend out to the. I I don't know. I <laughs> it, there's no there's no chance. I mean, it's Kenyon and Demar. It's not like yeah. I, we could name a million names, and the answer is Kenyon and Demar. Kenyon and Oscar. Didn't or, we ask yeah. Demar and and James about like who who is winning one on one or Lenny and Steve or 
someone like that and they were like I don't yeah know, man we've, we've had so many awesome guests on this show it's like, hard to dif- differentiate they were like they'll like Canyon's still gonna block every shot, blah blah blah. So think know. about that. Think about that. Remember that time we talked to 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 Lowe and and Stokes, or maybe it was that time we talked to Demar and James White, or or maybe it was that time we talked to. This has gotten stupid. Okay, we're gonna, <laughs> this I'm gonna go stupid. Vincent Banks. <laughs> and one. Yeah, because nobody has an like nobody can answer. Like nobody could prove you wrong. I like and, it. I like it. And Robert Whaley. <laughs> All right. Uh, starting from 2000, <laughs> what would your starting lineup for be for an NCAA tournament game? Who would you choose if watching an open gym run? So we get, starting from 2000, we get Kenyon, because Kenyon played Kenyon. in 2000. Kenyon, low. Gary, SK, Jaron. Yeah, that's a... Good luck. Good luck against them. Kenyon and Gary at the, at the four and the five. Logan at the one. SK and Jaron on the on the wings. On the wings, yeah. I I, I feel confident with my pick. Right. That's that's I mean, not to that's not to discredit Lenny, Demar, or Jake, Kenny. or Demar, Satterfield, but I think those are my five. Yeah, I mean Jake would be another man. If I said if, Jake, yeah. Yeah, would yeah. those would those be the same that you would want if watching an open gym run? Uh, no, I'd want James in an open gym run. Oh, I'd yeah. probably want Demar in an open gym run, just because like his shooting range at six nine was absurd, and he could he could deck it a little bit. Jared open gym really would be a little different. I I would want Hicks <laughs> in an open gym run. Titus, would, yeah. I want well, Titus would beat you up. <laughs> I want Titus. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you get a little bit of yeah. And then uh, Jared Hensley, because he tore up open gym he was, last. Hey, year. look, Aaron was there. He was nasty. And that David day. Julius that day. <laughs> he was nasty that day. All right. Hypothetical. If you added present day Kevin Durant to this year's 21-22 roster, do they win the national championship? No. We're making the tourney though. Mm-hmm. Sure. What would would Kevin play the five? I I, I mean it's a four. That's essentially he played essentially played the four at Texas. No, I know, but I'm just saying, like trying to get the best five that that this. No, had. Abdul was Abdul would have been your best five. I don't know that, Durant on the roster. I don't know that this team beats Houston with Durant on the roster. No, they no they beat, they Houston. beat Houston. Well, they beat Houston without. Uh, Sasser and Mark, yeah. Durant would score forty. Yeah. Who's D up Durant? I don't. Fabian I don't think White? Fabian don't, White. Fabian White's going to shut down Kevin Durant. I don't think they're taking two. They're not beating Houston twice. No I shot. I think we're underestimating Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant, Kevin Durant is. I'm just Kevin Durant you. is a top five scorer in the history of basketball. Okay. I think that this team would would make the Sweet Sixteen with Kevin Durant. I think this team had deficiencies. Team. I, I just they, don't know. Yes, I don't, I don't that care Kevin that Durant Kevin would mask. Durant. <laughs> you know what this team's deficiencies were? Not Lincoln having a six eleven dude you could throw the ball to and say score on these motherfuckers. Maybe, maybe he would be your five. He might be. <laughs> uh, true or false? Mikey Saunders will be a legit D one star by senior year, wherever he goes. Wherever he goes, no. Let, let me let me see where he goes. Like. Mike Saunders will be a legit D1 star by senior year if he goes to Duke. No, because Duke is always going to have a top 10 five-star point guard that, I mean, that's going to take his minutes. I would you just how good Logan Johnson was this year. I, I would mean, just imagine that Killer V at was... St. Mary's. You right, think no, Logan Johnson would have played right. it over Kerwin Roach? I'm not saying Duke? that. I'm saying no. depending on where he goes. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm yeah. that's I'm agreeing with yeah. you. I'm just like, right. yeah. Let me know where he goes and possibly. I love Mikey. He could tear it up some places, I think. All right. Uh, transfer portal process question. Do we expect the players considering and being considered by Cincinnati to take an on-campus visit? Can you take us through the differences beyond compressed timing between recruiting high school kids and transfers? Can we get articles, interviews, if any transfers do visit? Uh, no, we're not. We're not in the content game. We're not going <laughs> to. Now, 
transfers are a little more difficult in terms of getting content from because they've been through this once. Like they're not about wanting to get on how many how many stories can I get about me on 24/7, right? Like they can be depending on the transfer a little bit more difficult to get in touch with. Brent, you've dealt with that with me yeah. uh, through well, times. It, it's not easy. The transfers will talk once their decision is made and Right. That doesn't happen. Um basically as a transfer you get five officials. Now with transfers again you're dealing with guys that have been through this before. They're generally not looking to take five visits. Like they want that. Here's the two or three schools. Let's get to them. Let's make it happen. How many it's visits do about, the schools get? Uh, I don't know that number right now. Okay. It's a sliding scale. It's a, it's a, it's a difficult question because it's a sliding scale over two years. So like UC was in trouble during the Brandon phase. Because they they had so many spots to fill that over a two year window they had used a ton of official visits. Um, I don't think UC's back is up against it right now, and the rules are changing this year again. Um, so I don't have a specific answer for that. I, I wish I had a better answer, but I don't. There okay. is a sliding scale, and there's only so many visits you can have over a twenty four month window. Don't you feel like also with the portal, it's a little bit easier to just like. To an unofficial visit, like tell a depends. Like, like it, where's the kid from? Where where's the kid at right. school? Where does his family live? Right. Like, no, I agree. If, if, I agree. If he's if he's in uh, Duluth, South Dakota, is that where Duluth is? South Dakota, Minnesota, Minnesota, Minnesota whatever. Oh, it sounded just, it had a good ring just, to it. You just said Duluth. Someone, someone's being like, "All right, who's from Duluth?" <laughs> right? I know that's. I was trying to be as <laughs> off as I could possibly be. Seventy-five uh, percent of the process is done. Remember, no, I, I will stand by that a thousand percent. When a kid goes in the portal, he has an idea of at least who is involved. Who, especially if the kid's good, it, like that's just how it works. Um, they may need to like if they're they're in the middle of nowhere. They're going to need you not only to fly. Uh, here's the big difference, Brent, on on uh, transfer official visits. Right. Generally, the kid and his family are in two different places, separate spots. Yeah. It's so you have to fly the family in and right. the kid in. Like uh, you have to make sure that matches. And generally, they're not going to be like we're both paying for eight hour trips to Cincinnati from two different locations. Um, so, but also remember if you're bringing a transfer in for an official visit, you're deep. Yeah. And like it's you and somebody else generally, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I mean like more like, like uh, a lot of, a lot of people in the portal, they kind of know like what their mindset is on what they want to do. Sure. When they make the move, when within recruiting, it's like, Yes, let me see all of this. Yes, let me see what the city. Yeah, has that part is different see. for sure. So I'm just explaining breaking down the, like, the flight part. Yeah, yeah, yeah like uh, what an official visit means is we will Everything transport for, you right. here, right? As opposed to you have to get here on your own on an yeah. unofficial visit. Right. I like these talks because we can, like, I think you guys provide the perspective of what fans are thinking. And I can provide the reality of like this is what it means. Yeah. Like this is this is what an official visit ultimately like. It's not about you get a hotel room and we'll take you out to dinner. It's how are we all gonna get here from right. you know twelve hundred miles away? All right. Right. How confident are you that a third roster spot opens up? Are there any names that have hit the portal currently that we should keep tabs on? Pretty confident. And Ken Dog, I love you, brother. <laughs> when there are names I can give you that you should keep tabs on, I give you. That's my job. That's literally what the, the definition of my job. It's it's just what we talked about earlier, though. We don't know because there's so many teams still playing and all of that. So there's so many names that, uh, that there's 600 names that aren't in the portal. I can't give you a name for a player if they're not in the portal. 
if there was a name currently in the portal, like the, the kid from NC State, I've told you. Uh, Hayes, uh, whatever his name is, Cameron, Cameron Hayes, whatever. Right. Hello, I, think that's, I, I think that's somebody that if they had a bunch of spots open, would would definitely be a name of interest. He's from Greensboro, where Wes is from. He's a four-star recruit. But here's what you have to ask yourself. Does he make the team better than they were last year? The answer to that is probably yes. Does he make the team appreciably better? I don't know that that answer is yes. So when you're dealing with the portal and you're a staff, those are the conversations you're having. Like, does this guy make us better? Well, he's probably better than the, the, the two guys we had, or he's probably better than the starter we had. So the answer is, yes, he makes us better than we were last year. But is he the best option to make us as good as we can be? Right. And that's a decision that these guys are sitting in the Linder Center, hitting the clicker on tape, all day like that's what they're doing if they're not on the road recruiting right now is they're sitting in the lender center and just watching tape non-stop and saying all right i think this kid makes us better but is he the best option to get where we want to be not just next year but two years from now and three years from now depending on the kid so those are a lot of like tough conversations that that are happening right now I, right now, I don't know that there's – I have not gotten word that there's anybody in the portal that is a priority. When there is, if there is, when there is, I will post that on the board. It's literally my job. That's what, I, that's what you guys pay me for. Aaron, you're on mute. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just trying not to sniffle like all over. The I know. Mic. I'm just saying you were on mute. Like I, I wasn't it. blaming you for it. No, you were on I, mute. I, I Shit. appreciate it. It it's appears Wes is confident in landing a transfer point guard who can contribute next season. Would this come from specific knowledge of point guards hitting the portal, or is he a confident recruiter in general? Yes. <laughs> Nailed it. When does the 2022 class arrive on campus and begin team workouts? Generally in June, right around the time they graduate from high school. Um, it depends on when graduation happens, how that aligns with uh, the start of classes. Um, but generally early June to mid-June. What are these two guys doing, Aaron? Aaron, what, what are your boys doing? I, I don't know. I don't know. What are they doing? Group text. There's a group text. Uh, we're in the middle of a podcast. And Ed and Jeff are, are just like, I'm tomorrow night, I'm group texting just Ed and Jeff, and I'm just going to text them for two hours. Good. Approach to roster <laughs> construction and recruiting for 2023 and potentially the first year in the Big 12. How does West balance the two new open spots for 2022? One year guys or more, plus the potential super senior seasons of Micah Adams Woods and Davenport in 2023. I have no fucking idea. <laughs> How, uh, I'll answer the first question. How does Wes approach roster construction and recruiting for 2023 and potentially the first year in the Big 12 get a lot fucking better than they are right now? All answers, all of the other answers center around that, right? And what happened today is a part of that. Because if you look at it, Mikey is leaving. That's a fact. Micah exhausts his senior year, four years of eligibility next year. You now have two point guards that are not going to be on the roster in 2023 when you enter the Big 12. David DeJulius only has one year remaining. 
John Newman only has one year remaining. You have a potential COVID year with Odie. We'll see how that goes. But this is a roster that's going to look entirely different in 2023 than the one that we saw play against Houston in the AAC tournament to end their season this year. How they handle that, I have no clue. I I don't know yet. I don't know. (laughs) And I also think that Wes knows that Isaiah Collier would probably like to see a good amount of of open minutes on the board if that's something that he has expressed interest in. Brent, five-star recruits don't care about that. I'm coming into play. I'm better. Right. I'm, okay. I'm a top 20 recruit in the country. I I'm better than everybody saying. on your roster. No. I'm coming into play. I understand what you're saying. Yes. But... I, I, that just I, I, None of it goes to like kissing the ass of a kid that's two years from making a decision. You know what I mean? No, I agree. But I, I, I know that that's like the, the thought process. Ever, what can we do to get Isaiah Collier? What has to happen to get Isaiah Collier? There's a lot of things that have to happen to get Isaiah Collier. One of them is not... Like, I think I'm going to come in and be yeah. stuck behind right. a three-star point guard that, you know, like, those guys don't think that way. That's why they're alphas. Alpha top. Yeah. Yeah. And if they're not that alpha, you don't want them anyway, right? <laughs> yeah. Thank you. All right. Um, last mailbag, the bank's mailbag. Another series of rapid-fire questions that Chad will get way too detailed about. Yeah. What's worse? What what's what's worse? Snakes or spiders? <coughs> I think spiders are the worst. Um, I I don't. I guess it depends on how poisonous the snake is, though, right? I, mean, I tell you what, both of them scare the poop out of me, man. <laughs> One of those big like anacondas or boa constrictors or something like. No, that doesn't scare me. I, I fuck them things. I'll I'll mess them up. It's but ones like that, that like can lay in the grass and just huzzah and then you're dead but like moths scare me in like <laughs> moth <bugs>. scares <laughs> uh, the the moth is not going to eat the, he's, he he doesn't have time to eat your clothes off while like you can kill him a, a damn stink bug scares me same uh should Aaron have a boy or a girl it's a girl it, it is a girl 100 it's a girl I think you're a great girl, Dad. Let's stick with girl. I think you'll be a good girl, Dad. I do think you'll be a good girl, Dad. Next, and next one, maybe. Oh, by the way, be boy. By the way, it's fucking awful. <laughs> <laughs> uh, last of all, when you were a kid, what did you guys want to be when you grew up? This, this is what I wanted to do when I grew up. And I didn't know it looked like this, but I wanted to. I wanted to do sports talk radio. That's what I wanted to do. I did a report in like third grade that I wanted to be a graphic designer. That didn't really pan out. Oh, wow. We could use a good graphic designer. Yeah, but I, I don't <laughs> graphic design. <That's- laughs> was, there, was there even graphic design back then? Well, anyone who designed like a logo back then by hand <laughs> was a graphic designer. Ah, <laughs> yeah, okay. that's right. <laughs> you have to take in mind, like me in third grade, that was like like 1994. I'm Microsoft guessing, Brent, you're like play. me. Like, you wanted to be a, a play-by-play, like, I, media guy. You know, when I was in third grade, or wait, what is this about? Oh, when you were a kid. I, well, I had dreams of being What is this about? <laughs> I had dreams well, of being an athlete, but. Fuck, uh, come on. <laughs> I, I stopped, did. stopped growing in seventh grade, but, well, except for, you know, horizontally. Um, but, uh, anyway. Chad- I I also wanted to be an actor, and I toss around acting a little bit. Oh, I was in a couple of plays, but like off the script because I was playing sports, and I didn't want to tie the two together for some reason. Right. But yes, Chad, it turned into this pretty. Quick. Chad, here's a name for you. I interviewed Jim Borgman for that the cartoonist. Yeah, for for that yeah. uh, that that report. So that was pretty cool. Wow, he was game get him on the like, pod? He did some legendary. I think he's dead, right? I don't Uh-oh. know the answer to that. He retired at least. I don't know if he's dead. I, he retired for sure. Look it up. <laughs> That's Rest like a couple. Of, it's like true. Couple if he's, this, I don't. This is not a Rex Chapman moment. I'm not saying he's dead. Oh my gosh. Man, I'm saying no. he might be dead. I, I don't believe, know. I can't believe no one corrected him. Unbelievable. Yeah, and it wasn't hugs right there too. But anyway, um, 
Gosh, Aaron, the, uh... Aaron, I'm deleting. Like, I'm muting. I'm putting pardon the punctuation in timeout. That's fine. It's it's like a few weeks ago. I was with some friends, and we were like, <laughs> we got an offer to go go to the George Michaels concert. We were all like, eh, it could be cool. We could go see George Michaels. And then, like, our Uber driver was like, I- I'm pretty sure George Michaels passed away. <laughs> and none of us even knew it. it was like, yeah. oh, so it was an uh, impersonator, George Michael? I, I think they did a hologram. It was in Carmel, Indiana. So uh, it was a hologram. Two, two together there. Yeah. Borgman is still alive. Okay, good for him. There we go. There we go. Congratulations to Jim Borgman. I, he's retired. He's not doing cartoons anymore. I, I agree. $50 fine for killing somebody. That's the way that the Lebetard show does them. They put it in yeah. the, Paul, the Paul Fine bucket. That's fair. I just I, I didn't I didn't say he was dead. I said I didn't know if he was still alive. The fine bucket. I like it. Is that like I'll do 25 for that one for not right. knowing. Well, I mean, if you're covering our tab for uh for Urban Artifact, whenever we get there, yeah. that'll work out. Speaking uh, of Urban Artifact, time stamp, y'all. Well, no, there, there was there, there's one there was one last question. I don't know what this is. Uh, th- that was the end. Um, it was just P.S. It is surreal watching a war live on TikTok. It's like Call of Duty, but in a language I do not understand. So no, there was, was uh, wasn't there one after that. No, or there was. was uh, there was. I, they deleted about, it. Yeah, they did delete it. I thought you deleted it, so I wasn't going to. No, it I didn't. But... I had no clue what it meant. Was it reckless? No, it was like it asked some about a name of somebody that I did not know who that person was. Oh. All right, that's uh, that's the mailbag. So, one more time, timestamp, y'all. Urban Artifacts, Urban proud Night. sponsor of the timestamps. Their tap rooms located in Northside, sixteen sixty Blue Rock Street. It's open Wednesday through Sunday with a pizza kitchen outside. The beers are sold online, shipping to select states, and we currently distribute to 13 total states with more on the way. Urban Artifact is the largest sour-only brewery in the U.S. They operate in the historic St. Patrick's Church, which is 150 years old. Wow. That's incredible. Well, guys, anything else in closing? This was another great one. No, thanks to Marquise, man. That was really cool. Um, I love getting, like, it, it, here's the thing I think about Marquise, right? It was like a normal dude. Like, there was never a massive amount of hype around Marquise. He wasn't like Sauce or Dez. He was a guy that came into the program unheralded, like, didn't have a big recruiting profile or name. He worked his way up. He went through some adversity. He went through some hell. He went through two, four, and eight seasons. He made it to the NFL. He just won a goddamn Super Bowl championship. Yep. Big time. So so those are the guys I love to talk to. Like th- those are the guys I think the fans relate to. Like the UC story, the underdog, like, you know, make more of yourself than what you are. That was the shit. A well, big, big shout out to Marquise. He was awesome. He really was. So, yeah. Shout out to Marquise. Thank you for coming on. Big, big shout out as well to Urban Artifact. Co oh. sponsoring the timestamps. And a big, of course, shout out to Dan Co Transmission for everything they do as well. $10 off in Royal Change. You mentioned the BBP head there. But yet again, to my broadcast buddies, good pals, good friends, Mr. Aaron Smith, Mr. Chad Brendel. I am Brent Young. This was another BBP presented by BearcatJournal.com. See ya.